Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the East Area Team English stream. My name is Chris Tun, joined by Aggie and very excited to get into things. We've got all the action coming to you live here from Milan this week for the playoffs before, of course, we do get the finals in two weeks time. Aggie, very excited to have you alongside me. Yeah, pleasure to take part and watch some quality FIFA. I mean, Italy over the last few years has become the, a very dominant force in FIFA eSports. And now we're going to find the best of the best. So I'm very excited. Yeah, very excited to get into things, of course. As you can see at home right now, we are going across and we have that little view of the Italian stream whilst we do get into things. Of course, if you are an Italian speaker, you can go over towards that stream. But for all you English speaking fans, we have the action for you all day long. Of course, tomorrow as well, we will be going through everything that is needed to be said here about the East Area team. But yeah, of course, we went through the regular season. Everything kind of just went as standard. We went through groups to get to this stage. And today we're going through the winner's bracket games. So these are some of the best teams that we have so far. And I know we're going to touch on them, Aggie, but is there anybody in particular that you're looking at that you have a good idea and think who's going to win it in this scenario? Or are you, are you not too sure yet? I'm not too sure yet, but I'm definitely looking out for a few of the players. I mean, uh, we have Venezia with uh, yes. Karim, who's really having a good season. Is currently ranked one on the Europe East FIFA.gg ranking, so it's probably a, a pre-favorite. Uh, we also have uh, Danny Pitbull, the reigning champ, who is not playing today playing tomorrow mm -hmm. is also going to be one I'm looking for. But a lot of quality players, a lot of experience, and yeah, it's just going to be a blast, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be really good fun, of course. We do, uh, we'll do. we keep an eye on Danny Pitbull. He's in a really bit of a tough spot, of course. When we did go through the group stages, only certain teams did get through to this winner's bracket. So the top two from each of those groups advance through into the winner's bracket, where they will face off today. And what they're actually fighting for today and tomorrow is a place in that final eight. These four games today, every single one of them will make it there and we, we'll be back in Milan in two weeks that's great for us we get to come out of Milan twice nice little couple of days in a beautiful Italian city I've never been personally and I'm actually really enjoying Milan of course and it has been really good fun but we should be getting into the first First game very, very shortly. As you can see on your screens, we're going through the groups right now. Genoa Esports won five games, drawn three, not losing a single game. 18 points for them over in Group C. They're definitely going to be a team to be watching. They are going to be in our first game against AC Milan Clash. Uh, looking at the AC Milan Clash, of course, we've got Crazy in there. we got Gabri for the side of Genoa. Crazy is a name that is kind of synonymous with the esports side of things for FIFA. He's been around for a long time. Do you think he's got a good chance this weekend? Yeah, or I this think week, I should say. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's a pioneer in, in, in Italian FIFA esports. And um, two seasons back, he really put Italy on the map in, in global FIFA, won some some big games, and, and now he's here wanting to, to get that title. He's a very experienced player, but so is his opponent, uh, Gapri from. from Genova. Uh, he's also a very, very strong player. So it's two experienced players and I'm looking forward to see who's, who's coming out on top in this match. And also another interesting point to go towards is the fact that the teams in these games are only from current Serie A players, of course, including your heroes. So you've got Di Natale, Cordoba, both in there. But you can only use icons that played in Serie A as well. And the limitation is four icons as well. We're probably going to see a pretty standard team across the board. And probably as the weeks go on, some people may adapt in terms of what teams they are going to be using. But when it comes down to it, it's not going to be exactly the same teams that we would see in normal FIFA competition. No, we'll have, uh, we'll have some diversity, obviously, uh, and I think it's great. I love it, really. I love the concept and um, being able to prioritize which players uh, will be the most important for them is going to be interesting. I do believe we'll see the likes of Hullet on, on each team, but when we, come to the, <laughs> when we come to the Serie A players, we, yeah. there will be some diversity, and I'm a huge fan of that. Is there anybody in particular looking at East Area? Of course, I mean, for myself personally, with my team at home, picking up Foot Fantasy Tonali was a, was a must-do, but these players actually can't use him. He, he was before the cutoff came through, or after the cutoff came through, I should say, he actually advanced on into it. But yes, of course, I, I mean, it does make it very, very interesting in terms of the teams, and I'm sure we will see a few different comparisons over the next couple of days. And of course, in the next two weeks, when we do, of course, reach the final eight, that's the hotel we're staying in. You're just giving all the info out to all the fans. We, we, I mean, you're gonna have people lining up for signatures outside this hotel now, Aggie, what's going on? They're yeah. giving away the information. It's looking great. It's looking really, really great. And I mean, uh, as, as we have been speaking about, and as one of the important points for me to make is that Italian FIFA is, is really going somewhere right now. Um, 
and you see it, you see it on the on the global series ranking as well. You have five Italians in the top ten. That's that's massive. That's historical in my opinion. So I'm really expecting the finest of the finest. Well, let's see how they do, of course. And and just to comment, yeah, the, the, the hotel is very lovely. All the players have been there. We've been seeing them outside, just having a nice old time. Although they didn't invite us to this meal specifically, which I think is quite rude, really. But nonetheless, we've been enjoying the Italian food. Uh, maybe just a little bit too much, if anything. But the players, you know, getting themselves ready, nice and relaxed for what is a very intense schedule, it has to be said. Maybe not for the teams who are on the winner's bracket side of things, but tomorrow the loser's bracket is a long, long, grueling, day but as you can see we're starting to get towards starting this very very first game our italian host there of course bringing us things into perspective and getting the game nearly ready to go but of course i mean it's it's a pretty decent prize pool this weekend as well i think it's 50 000 euros in total and it's a lot of money on the line isn't it especially for you know when it does come down to the local competitions we see a lot of money of course on the grand uh, on the big stage in the global series but just for uh, in general a uh, uh, one that is specifically for our league it's a really good price point yeah it's great and i, I think it, it means something to the players but what means the most is obviously getting that title that's exactly. that's their main objective um, also the playoff spots will be key for them definitely but the title will be everything and they're going to give their best because there's a lot of shouts in in Europe, in the world right now. Who is the best player in Italy? Because there are so many good players and they want to prove that. They want to prove a point, all of the players who are left in the competition. 100%, they really do. Just want to represent the clubs that have selected them. Of course, it was through a drafting process as well. So these teams have been selected by the clubs, which is, or the players, I should say, have been selected by the clubs. So it's interesting to see if they have picked up the right people but let's have a look at what is uh, being deemed as the best goal and this was actually from group c as far as i'm aware it's gonna be ibrahimovic and i mean we didn't get to see a great deal of it but of course in terms of some of the fifa we are going to see here today it's typical meta of course that we are going to probably see but fantastic goals are always something you do like to make sure are involved but that was the uh, these are some of the best goals that we did see of course from from group c i do believe Ronaldinho as a player, like, you know, we, we don't see a load of, I would say, in the normal competition, but he is definitely a player that is going to cause some problems this weekend. Definitely. I mean, he, he was he was doing great for AC Milan, and now he's doing great for a lot of the players and the clubs here in the e Serie A. And we will be seeing him. He is with the five-star weak foot, um, with his flair and agility. He, he will be an important player together with his Brazilian fellow R9, who will we will be seeing him on each team as well. Probably had some of his most infamous moments, I would say, R9, of course, in Serie A for that time that he was on the Inter squad. What a player he was. Oh, people in Milan will remember that very, very well. The only memories I personally have of Milan is, is actually watching Newcastle come to play against them when, when we were good. It was a long time ago, a very, very long time ago. But, but these are some of the best goals that we did see from Group C. As of course it is Group C we are kind of concentrating on for this one because of course Genoa with such a good record, 18 points to their name heading into this first game. The green time though is definitely going to be something we keep an eye on. And to be honest, I don't think you really even need a green time it with R9 for the majority of the box. And one of our analysts may, uh, may just disagree with us, uh, <laughs> me in, in particular, on that one. We'll be speaking to them later, but as you can see we're nearly getting ready to get into the game. If we were to go with any sort of predictions for this one, Aggie, of course, and just to remind you guys at home, this is over two legs. Who are we leaning towards, you would say? I think it's a tough one because it's it's two very experienced players uh, who played uh, a lot of competitions uh, globally as well uh, and had success. And I know that the first game of the day is, is usually the most challenging one. You, you need to find your grip, uh, get rid of the nerves, find the flow. Um, Get that, get that feeling and the confidence. And it will be tough because both players are all confident and they are experienced. So it's really hard to go with one. I would like to see how, how the first game uh, goes out before I come with some sort of predictions. But if I have to pick one, I will say looking at, at, at Gabri, uh, he's, a, he's a slight favorite for me in, in, in this one, just because of uh, his, his group stage was great. Um, for, for Genoa, and he looks like a like a player who really wants the title. 
Yeah, he is definitely going to be somebody in and around it. And just having a look at Genoa's games, of course, a very, very good turnout for them. Five wins with the three draws as well. So very good result there for the side of Genoa. 18 points in their group. So they're going to be one of these teams who are really looking to go on and do well this weekend. But for me, I, I, I always have the Serie A teams kind of... How I always relate to a Serie A team is all of the jerseys, all of the kits Serie A teams have, year in, year out, are the best in the world, full stop. I will not, nobody will argue, well, nobody in here will argue with me because everybody is Italian, so they probably agree. But at the same time, I think Venezia is my favorite. Venezia, Venezia, yes, yes, look, they're nodding, they're nodding, I know, I know, that. I, I think they're my favourite, if I'm honest with you, and yeah, I think a lot of people are agreeing in here, although saying that in Milan is maybe a little bit questionable, but the Milan teams, fantastic jerseys as well, and if anything, if that's my standout point for this weekend, then you know what, you at home are just going to have to put up with that. It's, it's some great kids for sure, all of them, I mean, uh, it was so, I was also out in, in the city today earlier, and I... I had to pick a, a jersey up. Oh, which one did you pick up though? But I'm you, not going to say that here in Milan <laughs> because there are, there, are, there are a few clubs, right? So um, I want to get all of them, but um, for now, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I like Venetius as well. Yeah, very, very nice. But hopefully we are ready to get into this game very, very shortly. You can see the Italian commentator as there are colleagues walking us through each and every segment before we do get into this game. That was just a little recap to the regular season coming on through as well and how things are working, but these guys are going to get us into this game very, very shortly. Thank you to everybody who is joining us on both of the streams, of course, across the board and all weekend. All th I keep saying weekend. I'm so used to events being on weekends. This is the problem. Why is it middle of the week events just completely throwing me off, but we should be jumping into the game really, really shortly for you guys at home. And we have four games coming up today. And of course, just to remind you guys at home, it is two legs that we are playing across on both sides. Look at that. It's almost like they heard me. There you go. Genoa Esports taking on EC Milan. Q Lash to take, oh, Clash, I should say, sorry, to kick things off. Then Bologna FC 1909, Esports King against, you see, this is the one that, I, this is one <laughs> thing that we are going to maybe struggle with a little bit. US Serlin and Tana, Tanana? Uh, well, you know what, we'll get there in the end. 1990 Esports as well. Benetti FC Gamer going up against Torino FC Esports team and then Sampdoria taking on Inter Esports to close out the day. Both games, or oh, every single game, I should say, will be across two legs of FIFA. Typical way that we, of course, do play FIFA Esports and we should be jumping into the game momentarily. Uh, looking at a couple of these games though, I think Genoa against AC Milan is a really, really big one. But net, I, I mean, they all are. They, these are all winners bracket teams at the end of the day. Teams who have very much deserved their way through to this spot. And I think tomorrow is kind of where the pressure comes in big time, doesn't it? We're going to see some of these teams maybe here tomorrow as well if they do drop into the loser side of things. So keep an eye on that. But of course, these teams, this is a really good chance to get to that top bit. Definitely. And what you really want to do is, when you're, if you're in the winner bracket, you want to secure your spot early because then you're free of the nerves. You, you, you don't have uh, like a day to think about, oh, I'm playing a, a, a knockout game tomorrow, basically. Um, and that's why these quarterfinals in the winner bracket are going to be super vital for the players because they don't want to come into a, a scenario where they potentially could go out tomorrow. They, they want to secure the spot fast. And it's not going to get easy, but that is just how they are going to progress. That is to be 100% confident in their abilities and 100% focused. We'll be heading into the game in just a moment, I believe. Ah, not quite. There you go. There's the prize pool. They're, they're teasing me. But just as to mention that prize pool we talked about before, 15,000 euros for first place. It's a lot of cash on the line. 9,000 for the runner-up, third to fourth, six, and of course, fourth to eighth, coming in with three and a half thousand euros. We were having a conversation before. You you said to, to us that you peaked too early. Yeah. <laughs> World champion, of course. When was it? 2014. 40. Yeah. That's a long time ago, bro. Yeah. That's a long time ago. I'm getting old. <laughs> it's time for I a new generation. I don't think you are, though. I, wait, hold on. Are you not the same age? Or are you younger than me now? Oh, I'm 25. 25 and he's getting old. I can't believe that I'm here. <laughs> Honestly, this is ridiculous. I'm sitting here at nearly 30. That's old. Anyway, we should be jumping in in just a moment. But yeah, I, I mean, as you said, you peaked too early. The, the prize pools now for FIFA are absolutely fantastic. But again, it's something else to know. It, it's, it's nice that you did peak, though. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that was pretty good. It, it gave me the option, perhaps, to be here. Of course. I mean, which I'm very delighted for. So, yeah, as you say, can't wait to get started. And nice prize pool. 
um, the trophy, the playoff spots, which means everything to these players. Um, they really want to prove themselves here in Italy um, at their home soil, but also afterwards internationally. Of course, of course. There's Gabri playing by the side of Genoa. And of course, for AC Milan Clash, we do have Crazy. And, and he's one of the guys I, I feel like I've been commentating on for quite a while. I mean, I haven't commentated at FIFA as long as, as you've been playing it. But he's a player who has been around for a very long time. Plenty of experience as well at this, sign, this kind of level. Yeah, definitely. He's been playing for... I think he almost started the same, same time as I did. And I, I was playing for over 10 years. So, I mean, he's a very experienced player. And, yeah, as I said, a pioneer in, in Italian FIFA esports. And looking at the pictures, he seems he seems pretty relaxed, pretty confident. Um, so yeah, maybe some mental edge from the beginning, from from uh, AC Milan clash crazy side. Yeah, possibly. But both these players have kind of been on the stage already through the regular season and such. So maybe it's nothing new to them. But we're loading in in just a moment. We'll be ready to go into this game and of course as mentioned we are going to be playing of cross two legs we of course do have our other colleagues here with us this weekend we'll be talking to Zenny and Alex in the breaks in between games to see what they think of these squads and how they're playing and if we'd like to see anything different heading into the second legs but we should be loading in in just a moment of course everything on the side of PlayStation 5 as is synonymous with the side of the FGS Loading in in just a moment, just getting their game ready to go. Four games coming up today, two legs apiece. Tomorrow we have a grueling seven games. Of course, two legs apiece on that side of things as well. I'm very interested to, to see how things do break down there. But do you know what, you know, for the side of, of Gabri and Crazy, these guys will have played each other before, right? Definitely. I mean, it's it feels like when, when meeting the players that it is a community, they are friends but when when it kicks off their rivals obviously and they want to win for 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 any prize right but they have been playing together for sure they have been practicing helping each other out but now it's time to maybe they can take advantage of it one of the players that they 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 know how the other guy plays and it can become more of a mental game and this is also a live event, which we didn't have too many of for, for, of for a time. Uh, it's a different atmosphere than playing home. Uh, I cannot state it enough. It's, it's just different sitting at an event. It's an amazing feeling to be, to be here, to be out and to play. But there are some other nerves uh, kicking in. And it's just different environment. Well, here we go then. The start of the East Area Team playoffs here today. Of course, over the next two days, we will find Eight of our teams who are going to be in that final bracket when we come back to Milan in a couple of weeks' time. But to kick things off, it is going to be Genoa taking on AC Milan. We've got Gabri taking on Crazy Genoa. Shooting from left to right, and of course, AC Milan in the white. From right to left, Genoa in their home kits for this game. And just having a look at some of the names on the team, you've got Damian, Barella. I think probably, where would you say is the hottest contested spot for a, for a, a team in terms of players? It, you would say that the centre mid options in Serie A are pretty good, but it, it's hard to argue against a man like Ruud Hullet. Definitely, Hullet is a, is a safe choice on the midfield. I'm interested to see, it's a Barella playing in there um, on the AC Milan team and on the Genoa team. It's Cassie, who's perhaps a bit more strong, bigger, and yeah, f fills in a bit more while Barella is a bit more. Uh, oh, let's just follow this. No, ball over offside, though. The side of AC Milan, there was maybe a little bit of an opportunity that had been sniffed out. Just having a look, actually, towards it. Of course, moments players now in the game as well, and now they're going to be influential here. It's not even a moments player, it's going to be Zlatan Ibrahimovic for Genoa. Can he get this one away? Good opportunity for Ronaldinho on the follow up. That one will be cleared. And just about survival for the side of Crazy. As AC Milan having to defend. And that was a good chance. And we saw what both players want to do. It is the through balls. And a bit out of nothing, Ibra had the chance. And maybe we could get one here. Oh, Ibra inside the box. Red timed. And that is a big opportunity straight out of the gate for Genoa. Gabri. Hand on his head for a moment there. And for this Ibra signature signings card... 
that's one you'd expect them to bury, but making sure, I, and I think that's one thing that you've got to look at with the time finishing. It is a risk to try and take it, especially in that scenario. You'd like to think a normal shot would have probably scored. Yeah, I think you can see it on the camera as well. Gabri is, is a bit annoyed because you know he has to score that, and unfortunately he mistimes it. And we have to be very aware here of the build-up because these through balls from the fullbacks is something we're going to see throughout this week. It's super efficient and what I also thought was pretty interesting is to see the formations and the tactics while Genoa and Gabri is playing with the diamond, the narrow one, I'm pretty certain about that, while, while Crazy is playing with the 4-4-2, uh, maybe with the two CDMs. So uh, a bit of a contrast between the two formations and perhaps it's crazy time here, but again, just one offside. I think Gabri started out the game pretty well. You, you, you want to get into some good chances fast to feel confident in your attacking gameplay. Here's Hullet in the middle, just trying to find a little bit of room. And I think a lot of you guys at home who will be watching, it's when you watch FIFA Esports, it's very different to the game than I play in a certain sense. It's a lot more tense. And what you will quite often see is, is players will take that extra pass to make sure of a goal. So sometimes when you're like, why hasn't he shot or why has he done this? Well, it's because he's just trying to look for an opportunity that potentially looks like this. R9 oh, with a shot across and it will be Koulibaly to get in the way. Damian clearing this one away and of course, Paolo Maldini will be a staple in nearly every single team throughout as one of the best centre-backs, not just in the game, but of course on offer here for these teams. Now an opportunity for AC Milan to get themselves away. Crazy looking for the little pass off the left-hand side with the controlled run. Good tackle comes in from Dami and that's going to be Genoa throwing. Yeah, AC Milan and, and Crazy trying to take advantage of the player lock and, and create, create a, a good scenario on the wing to perhaps make a breakthrough. But it seems like the direct style from Gabri so far has been good. It opens up the spaces so this is a free run. Have to put it in. Oh, Ibrahimovic looking to try and take it round the keeper. And my man will get in the way. That's another let off for AC Milan though. It does feel as if Gabri and Genoa are really knocking on the door. Seemingly having the better opportunities so far. Spinazzola here down the left-hand side. Can AC Milan counter with a good opportunity here? It is going to be Ronaldinho nearly getting away down the left-hand side. But Damian once again in the way. Ibrahimovic now. Moving forward, a little bit of room for Di Natale, of course, the hero card on the right-hand side. Back to Ibrahimovic, Ronaldinho inside the box, back to R9. Surely this is a huge opportunity for Genoa. And AC Milan will just about survive once more, but for Gabri, it looks so much more threatening on the attack. Yeah, he, he doesn't need to string too many passes together to get dangerous and get a, a breakthrough. Unfortunately for him, he just picked, takes the wrong decision at the end when he had the chances. Uh, some of the situations he could have gone for a, a pass while he decides to shoot and in other scenarios he tried to shoot where he could have gone for that extra pass. So just a small lack of sharpness. Opportunity but it could be here for Ibrahimovic inside the box. It's straight in my hand and honestly for Gabri in these scenarios, does it come down to having too many opportunities that are going to be missed though? Does the frustration start to settle in a little bit? If you're crazy, you're, you need to stop giving these opportunities away for one, but you're quite happy to continue to survive them. Definitely. I, I, think, I think I would take a pass if I were crazy because there's something defensively that, that doesn't work. It's simply too easy and you, you can see it here as well. He's getting too many opportunities with his, with his offensive players where he can find these good passes up to his strikers. And he should be very happy that he didn't convert at least two of them because it's been big chances. And you expect Gabri to convert some of these chances, but fortunately for Crazy, it's still a throw. Still in a good spot. Spinazzola down this left-hand side, very much a card that is, is being looked at by a lot of people right now. Of course, with the Foot Fantasy Tonali coming out, you're looking for those Italian players in this area for that strong link so you can throw them into your team or maybe even one of the hero cards for the perfect one. Of course, Di Natale will get you there. That's how I've got him in my team. Nonetheless, there we go. First half is over and done with. Still, somehow, it is only 0-0. And of course, you were very correct there with the side of Genoa and Gabri using the 4-1-2-1-2. Very meta formation, of course. And I'm sure the guys over on the analyst side of things will speak of that as well. But 4-1-2-1-2 benefits what would you see as the is the positivity for 41212 I think it's it really suits you if your game style is is direct and you want to want to create those 
easy chances, so to speak, because you don't need to string too many passes together in order to get dangerous. And you you have the you have the counter attacks where you're deadly. You're very strong centrally, and I always usually I'd like to say that you win FIFA games centrally. It's it's not on the wings, obviously. When you have so many players centrally, as we can see here at AC Milan, I think maybe we've, we've seen a formation change, but it's a 4-3-2-1, which also is very meta and a central strong formation, but allows you to play a bit more wide. Uh, he will have to switch something up because it's it's been a bit too easy to to get to get the ball with with Gabriel's cam and and find these passing opportunities, and he wants to change that here for the second half. We can already see, actually, we do have the Mkhitaryan card sitting in there for the foot birthday one. And that's an interesting one to look at as well, of course, with the side of um, on the Serie A. It's uh, the 5-5 five -five as well. There's always something to keep an eye on. Here we go. Di Natale now for Genoa. Ronaldinho into the middle. R9. Plays it out wide. Di Natale, not just a brilliant striker, but he can supply as well. I think it's 85 passing on his base stats. And it's one to keep an eye on. Again, I, I always like when I'm commentating over FIFA, like to because I feel as if I can relate to the viewer because I'm very average. <laughs> I'm very, very average at FIFA in general. But looking at some of these players and some of the positions that they play in, a lot of you guys at home would have used Dean Natale. A lot of you guys at home would have had a chance to probably use Spinazzola and people like that. Maybe not moments R9 or moments solid, of course. But there's plenty of players here that you can look at. You can get a good idea of how good they're playing. Maybe it's going to be R9, though. Who can break this deadlock here for EC Milan? Ibrahimovic. Now back to Hullet, just trying to find a little gap. Can't quite find it yet. Hullet back to Ronaldinho. Is this the gap that you're looking for, though? Of course, the skill moves to try and break his way through. Now, back to Spinazzola. They're trying to use the, the L1 to send his player into the depth and create some new space, some passing lanes. But Gabri is doing well with the outside traps just to push the team forward, not allowing any space or any room for Crazy to play into. But perhaps we can see something here, trying to make the speed boost as well, a ball roll scoop. But again, his pressing play and his defense has been on point so far, Gabri. Yeah, Gabri not letting anything through so far. Can he find something on the other side of things? It's a good driven ball into R9. The pass afterwards, though, is suspect, it has to be said. Ibrahimovic not able to get on the end of that one. It seems as if Ibra is going to be a player who is in there quite often. As <laughs> crazy, maybe playing with fire a little bit there. Any other striker options that you potentially look at outside of Ibrahimovic? Of course, R9, the moments card is, of course, going to be in there every single time. But there, there you go. There's the answer to the question. Foot birthday, Dybala coming in for the side of Genoa. That four-star, four-star Dybala. It's, uh, it's an interesting card. Yeah, and definitely with the, with the finesse trade as well. I mean, you have a, you have a very, very good player there to put in. Um, Ibra and R9 would be my, my strikers as well. I mean, the player speaks for himself and uh, unfortunately for Gabri in this game, Ibra haven't been converting, but they have that X factor you need in, in order to, to define the games and win new games. And we can see once, once again, it could look like AC Milan uh, and Crazy is it's actually switching up here again with his tactics. And that, that's something I, I actually like, that he's being uh, responsive to. He, he's reacting because you can see, obviously, the game haven't been working out as he wanted to. So he's not afraid to yeah, change his game plan and be flexible. And that's Ugh. some good stuff. He's done well with Keza and Anelli breakthrough, but yeah, it's Koulibaly or Cassie who gets in the way in the end, I should say. Sorry. R9 is looking for the run of Ibrahimovic. You can see that it's on. And R9 doing his dirty work towards the back as well. Ronaldinho, ball over the top. This is a huge opportunity now for Dybala, who breaks on through for Genoa. The keeper movement the wrong way. And it's going to be Paolo Dybala who takes the lead for Gabri and for Genoa. The ball over the top and Dybala gets it done. Never going to miss those. No, it's for the first time in the game, Gabri is calm and composed in front of the box just watching and awaiting crazy to make a reaction with the goalkeeper to move him slightly to the far post and he just waits and he can put it easy into the net and speaking about super subs you just mentioned it paulo dybala comes in 
And again, we see the efficiency of playing the narrow diamond. It can go so fast in the counter attacks. And he's playing it very well, Gabri, because he's not afraid to lose the ball. He's not afraid to, to take chances in his passing play in order to perhaps get those free runs. And it's worked very good for him in this match. Maybe we won't be able to find a counter attacking opportunity here, but a little bit of space with R9 is not something you want to give him. Of course, those time finesse is still very much working out for a player like that, but it's Ronaldinho inside the box, just trying to find his way through, but the ever-present Rude Hullet gets in the way once more. It's going to be an opportunity now for Crazy on the AC Milan side to try and get this one out. Of course, this is over two legs, though, just to remind you guys at home. So it's not done and dusted by any stretch of the imagination. However, difficult position now for the side of AC Milan and for Crazy. Di Natale waiting for the run here of Dybala. The player switch is going to help things up. Look at the run from Dybala once more. Ronaldinho chooses not to go with the pass. I think he tried, but good defending by Crazy. As he now plays this one away. Oh, he's going to give it away, though. Oh, nine. Is he able to unlock anything here? It's going to be the recycler player, but you can't be giving the ball away like that. It could be dangerous here, and I like the way the Gabri is always threatening the depth using the, uh, the trigger runs where you have... You press L1 and your player will start running into depth. That means that he always have to, to think about something. He's asking questions to Crazy's defense and that creates space for him to just make a short pass and move further up on the pitch. And that's been really superior for Gabri here in the first leg. But potentially can come back now, Crazy. But again, Gabri's defense been very solid, very solid. I gotta say I'm impressed because he's been dominating this game and it's been really, really, really superior. Trying to get something going here, Crazy, with five minutes to go in game of leg number one for these two players. Of course, on the winner's bracket side of things, can he find something here? You can see already for the side of Genoa, a lot of players back to defend. Barella now, pass inside to R9 and Maldini's gonna read that all day long and now you're in danger have conceded another opportunity on the other side of things. Good FIFA coming in here from Genoa and from Gabri. Back out to R9 to hull it. Ronaldinho is still in the middle there. Is that going to be the potential pass? He's going to give this one away. So potential counter-attacking opportunity here. R9, good defending once again on the forefront. Kessi is going to give that one away and it's going to be given away once again by the side of AC Milan. Di Natale moving forward. It's the ball clipped in towards Dybala. And my nine will just about get in the way. That may well be the last opportunity of the game unless Kiesa can get this one away down the left-hand side, but it's looking like after one leg of FIFA, Genoa will take a 1-0 lead. Yeah, and it could have been bigger. Let's be honest, uh, Gabri played a really, really strong first leg here. A lot of things can change. Um, Crazy got a lot of information throughout this game. He, he now has an idea of what he needs to change because he needs to change something, otherwise he won't going to win this match. Uh, the first leg here was, there was a, a difference uh, be between the two players, let's be honest. I mean, Gabri created all the chances pretty much and he was superior in his press, pre pressure play as well. Uh, he looks strong and he needs to, need to make something up uh, and change something. I felt like the, the biggest difference was that Gabri was playing offensive FIFA with a purpose where it seemed a bit more like uh, Crazy was just playing the ball around to, to keep the ball. He couldn't find those, those good scenarios for him and, and that was the, the major difference for me. Yeah, well, okay. Well, it's not just us here this weekend, of course, myself and Aggie. We do, of course, have the foot analyst himself in Alex and Zenny over, of course, on the analyst side of things. Guys, break it down of how you think that game went for one of these teams and any change-ups we could potentially see. Alex. Chris, thanks, Aggie. That was a very interesting game. Today, we're going to be breaking down all of the games after myself, Alex, also joined by Zen. It was a game which it finished 1-0 in that first leg, but it certainly could have been a lot more, couldn't it, Zen? Yeah, the margin could have been uh, much larger uh, in favour of Gabri, of course. Gabri was really strong in this opening, ma opening match for today. Of course, he created many chances, but could only concretise one. And yeah, that's a little bit of a shame for Genoa, because I think, uh, of course, the margin could have been 
uh, much more larger and uh, yeah we we saw a very good uh, fifa from uh, gabri in this first game and we were looking for alex uh, uh, these games and uh, we already had uh, one we, which was very spectacular of course uh, gabri played really well but crazy with the one nil results uh, can uh, of course overcome all the difficulties in the second leg yeah definitely we saw the 4-1-2-2 narrow which worked really really well as we do go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights looking for the over the top through ball a lot for Gabri and obviously capitalise on that as well. Do you think nerves played a bit of a part at the start with the what three, four chances we had in the first half? Do you think that was something that possibly came in? Yeah, probably uh, Crazy was a bit, a little bit of emotional uh, in coming on uh, this game. I think uh, Gabri was uh, really uh, convinced by his, his performance in the um, in the regular season where he finished really strong his group uh, in the first place with uh, also the best after attacks uh, uh, the best attack uh, by goal scored of the entire tournament with 18 and yeah that's like a, a little bit of a shame i'd say it again because we only so one goal in this first game of course uh, gabri could have could, could have scored much more goals and uh, i think uh, he will be uh, conscious about that and of course the one new result is still a good result for him but at the same time it could have been larger. Let's uh, let's yeah, be honest here. Definitely, Alex. it could have been a lot more. We saw, you know, trying to look for the green time finesses quite early on, and just the finishing in general, having the few red times, which obviously, unfortunately, putting them ones wide. It's just something that these players will be wanting to do to take, obviously, to you know, make sure they're ensuring the best possible chances that they can get. As we saw, uh, Dybala come through here with that winning goal. Goalkeeper movement being a very big thing in FIFA, which that's the mind games, which obviously we have to take into account there. Yeah, this time uh, in Latin, we we would say "mors tua vita mea." That means, uh, of course, when my opponent makes a mistake, I'm going to score a goal. And that's what happened in this uh, uh, only goal of this game. Of course, uh, uh, changes, substitution, I, I should say, uh, played a really good part in this game. Because, of course, uh, Dybala, on the first uh, ball he touched, uh, obviously, scored, obviously uh, scored his goal. And uh, that is the deciding goal for now, of course, uh, uh, coming into the, the second leg. Yeah, definitely. And if you're crazy, is there anything that you'd want to change? Would you be more aggressive? Would you look at a change of formation, like Aggie said? I think uh, uh, there has to be a mental change first for uh, Crazy because uh, he wasn't able to find really good spaces uh, in this game. Of course, he needs uh, a radical change in his attacking side uh, in order to overcome uh, this result, which is not good for him, of course. Yeah, definitely. I think the one thing to take into account as well, it is only one goal that we uh, Crazy is losing by right now. So that's something that he can take advantage of, I suppose. It's only one goal right now. We don't have to worry too much. We can go back out and obviously look to, to change things and kind of go from there. But it will be an interesting second leg. Do you have any favourites on this at all? I don't know. I think uh, Gabri was uh, playing really well in this yeah. first game. Uh, he also uh, finished strong in his uh, regular season. And I think he's one of the favourites uh, in order to win uh, the title at the end of mm -hmm. this uh, Serie A. So... I think he can get through this first uh, stage in the winner bracket. That is a very, very big claim. And recently, Syria has gone and launched the Keep Ra Ra Racism Out campaign uh, on the virtual pitch and on the real world. We do actually have the Keep Racism Out football shirt, which is available now on Ultimate Team for you to go ahead and pick up. And it's an absolutely beautiful shirt, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, really beautiful. I like uh, the colours uh, the, here. This dark and uh, light blue uh, compared with each other is uh, very, very good. Uh, and of course, you can use it on uh, your uh, FIFA games. So why not? Why not? Why not to use it? Yeah, course. definitely. Obviously, we all want to keep racing out of stadiums, raising awareness among football fans in both the real and the virtual world, fighting against all types of discrimination. That's something that we can all do as a collective. So we will be jumping in to the second game very shortly, which is the second leg, and it is a very, very big game coming up. And uh, it will be a very interesting one. I am looking forward to see whether Gabri can carry on with that dominant start, um, whether mm -hmm. he can push on or whether Crazy does come back and be that little bit more aggressive and maybe settle in and maybe let the nerves kind of sink in a little bit. Yeah, of course, of course now the pressure is o uh, only on, uh, on uh, Crazy. He needs to yeah. overcome this result. And uh, I also saw Gabri uh, closing up the spaces in uh, his uh, defensive side uh, really well in this first game. Uh, Crazy had basically zero chances yeah. to score a goal. I think he also couldn't uh, even shoot once in this first game. So, uh, yeah, Gabri very strong in this first game. Uh, of course, for Crazy... I
I think the second leg uh, would be very difficult. Yeah, and that's a big thing as well. Playing the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow is such an aggressive, uh, direct formation that sometimes you can lack a little bit in the defence. But we did see Gabri be very, very solid in that department. So we'll see if that continues over into the second leg. We are going to pass it back over to Chris and Aggie, who will be bringing us the second leg right now. Let's pass it back over to him. Thank you very much, guys. And jumping into this one in just a moment. But of course, uh, we, we stand with everybody in the Keeping Racism Out campaign that the Serial have released. And of course, it is something that uh, is very close to everyone's hearts. But yes, keep racism out of our game is absolutely the message we should be passing on. The jersey's great as well. And as mentioned, you can pick it up, of course, in FIFA Ultimate Team. I think it's just a couple of games played to grab a hold of it and you can represent the cause in game but of course heading back in towards this game in just a moment gabri going up against crazy the guys discussed it is it just a mentality change for crazy or would you be changing some of the tactics up because really nothing was working no i think i think maybe it's a mentality change because we saw in the first leg that he was actually trying to change formation he, i think he, he switched formation two times and it didn't really work um, so maybe it is something mental, maybe it was just the first leg, he just needed to get rid of his nerves. Uh, a second leg of, of FIFA can be something completely else than the first one. And if he gets a good start on the match, it could be a, a totally different game. And I think he should just put that into perspective that he is only behind with one. Um, there's loads of FIFA minutes to be played and it's only a matter of getting one or two chances and he can be back in the game. Oh, there may well be a chance here for Mkhitaryan down this right hand side. Which way is he going to go into our nine and Gabri will defend it. Straight from kickoff an opportunity there for the side of Crazy. And I think it's something you just noted that's very, very important there. For all that we've seen Gabri, well, for the most part, comfortably win that game. It is still only one to zero on aggregate and that's something you're going to have to take into consideration if you're both these two players. Gabri may well be the stronger it looks that way at least but is that exactly how it's going to play out crazy does have opportunities to find his way back into the game Barella into Ronaldinho pass backwards though is not very good and once again Genoa will be able to break and interesting to see if if Gabri wants to come out with with the same expressions as he did in the first leg because that was that was a statement, to be honest. That was aggressive, direct play, uh, played with no fear, which, which was a bit surprising to me because that's so hard to do when it's the first game of the day, like a first competitive game. Obviously, they warmed up the players and been practicing and stuff, but when it really matters, to be able to perform the way he did, could be good, but this could also be good. Oh, Ronaldinho in the box. It's the first good opportunity for Crazy. And he will find the back of the net. Fantastic work by Ronaldinho. The inverted flip flap comes out and see you later, defender. There's the ball in the back of the net. And we talked about it. Genoa and Gabri have been the better side, but it takes one moment in the game of FIFA to turn things around. And that 95, R, or not quite R9, that 95 Ronaldinho <laughs> card is never going to miss from there. And AC Milan clash crazy back into the game. And I like the, the pre-work he did here, uh, working his way into the box, finding Ronaldinho, just using L1 to, to stop up and just make your opponent think and make him react. And then you see the reverse Elastico get into the angle to the near post. And it's 1-1, a very, very nice goal for crazy. And as we've been speaking about, the game is set and I mean it could turn around totally now and if that would like to happen it Gabri would be a bit annoyed because he should have been more efficient in the first leg right he did definitely have opportunities but there's still a lot of FIFA to be played of course if it is all tied up heading in to the end of the second leg we will go over towards extra time and then penalties if needed on this side though, crazy trying to find another route through. Well defended by Gabri this time. Looking for the run of Ibrahimovic and surely that's going to be something that's going to be picked up by the defender once more. Yes, Maldini will get across. Really good defending there by the side of crazy. There you see the, the pace of Maldini. One of the pr preferred icons to play with and I understand that he is... Guy's a tank. Yeah, he's, a, he's complete. Ooh, 
that was a good chance as well, was, trying yeah. the, the lofted pass here. And it seems like he's stressing a bit more now, Gabri, which would make sense because he, he didn't get the start to the second leg here as he wanted to. But again, it just shows it's two experienced players who knows how to come back into a match, how to change things up tactically. And you see Milan now trying to get this one out. As far as I'm aware, look at, looking at the, at the midfield, it is looking more like a 4-4-2 a once more for Crazy. Back inside now to, towards Hullet and Barella. Looking for the pass outside to Damian. Definitely feels like AC Milan have been in this game a lot more than we've seen in the first one. There's an opportunity here, though, as Barella will now find Hullet. Ball into R9. This usually means one thing in the save for my nan. And Genoa now having to make a change here. Gabri looking just a little bit flustered on his cam in the top left corner. Yeah, now he certainly want to change things up a little bit because he's... He didn't have the start on the match as he wanted to. I think his game plan was to come out the same way as the first leg, try to get an early goal and potentially close the match. Um, but Crazy has been responding to that, mixed things up a little bit, finding some very, very good angles uh, and some passing lanes into his strikers. And it looks like the game has changed a little bit now. And it was a good chance, but I will say that the angle got a bit too wide. It was the, the angle wasn't there to get like a, a a goal, but just to get into those situations is a big plus because that was what he was struggling with in the first leg. And it seems like he's. We didn't see any. No, we, those situations. We we saw maybe a finesse shot, which is like just hoping something yeah. will happen and, and go in your favor. But now he, he seems more confident on the ball as well, the way he, he distributes the ball and play it around and twist and turn. So now we're off here and maybe there is a corner tactic here that works well. Could be. Oh, it's going to be R9 in the box with a little bit of room and it's Damian on the line to stop it for Genoa. That is huge. Well positioned from, well, I mean, the game essentially for Damian to be there. And that looked like it was going to hit the back of the net. And during that corner, actually, we've seen Dybala on for Ibrahimovic. You know what? And Gabri choosing somebody who's maybe a little bit more lighter on their feet. Somebody who can find those little tight moments a little bit better than Ibrahimovic, of course. But that is a let off for the side of Genoa. And crazy. Deserves to be in the lead here. Yeah, you can argue. You can argue that. I mean, I like that corner combination. Just finding... Um, Maldini, I believe it was, on the back post and just flicking it in to another one. And then eventually panic can happen. Some random stuff can an happen. Opportunity, Mkhitaryan in the box, the defender's going to be in front of them, but there's only really a bit of a half chance there. Gabri snatching at that one, uh, I would have liked to see it past that two more. Yeah, again, good for Gabri that he's getting a bit more far into the box, but still it haven't been the same, it haven't been as as easy for him to, to become dangerous. And that's one of the things that Crazy really mixed up here in the second leg. Uh, he, he haven't allowed Gabri to be as dangerous on the counters. And we'll see him potentially be dangerous now, but oh, it works. Oh, it actually worked. There you go, R9 on the edge to Kessie. And it, it just feels like Gabri's trying to force something that isn't there at this moment in time. The shot previously, the pass there. The force coming on through. Play a lot coming in and working out for him as well. Ronaldinho, well, we'll find the second pass. Ibrahimovic, Ronaldinho, edge of the box, just trying to find some room. It's going to be rude. Hullet on the edge into R9, looking for a little bit of room. That five star weak foot would have come into play. Gabri defends, finds himself behind in the leg, but we want a piece heading into the second half of the second leg here. It's a very tight game. It's hard to call, but it definitely feels as if crazy is on top right now. Yeah, I'm sitting with the same feeling. I think, the, as we spoke about, obviously Gabri was was the strongest player in the first leg. But here in the in the second leg, there's been no doubt that Crazy has been been dominating the game. So they had one leg each for now. There's still 45 minutes to be played here in the second leg, and it's going to be exciting. Right now, it's really hard to call because it's just a matter of that one chance. Who will convert it? Who will take it? Will it come? Potentially, we could be going to extra time and, and penalties as well. Well, let's see. 
if we do head down that route because it would be interesting way to kick things off, wouldn't it? Extra time and penalties will be very interesting, but can Gabri change something up here? Because honestly, it's been a completely different game for him in game number two. Hasn't Nelly looked as composed on the defensive side? Hasn't looked as good going forward? Definitely needs to change this up as quickly as he possibly can. Di Natale now for Genoa and for Gabri. Kessi into Hullet. Not going to work again. Just forcing the passes, but well cut off from the side of AC Milan clash. Crazy doing a good job at that. Yes, and if, if I have to, to, to say something that can be challenging playing with the narrow diamond is that you can only play a certain way because all your players are centrally and it's, it's a risky formation. There we see the through ball, Ugh. which we will be seeing throughout, throughout the week. It's, a, it's an overpowered move to make and if you time it right, it's, it's more likely a goal. But it's very advanced, it requires timing. Ball in, just about going to get away if you're Genoa here, it's going to be via Paolo Dybala. Exchanges passes of course with Kessi, now Hernandez down this left hand side. Theo is somebody who is, maybe that's one of the contentious spots, you know you've got Theo Hernandez of course, but Spinazzola as well is a very very good option out there. So maybe we'll see a couple of different changes there, Damian though does seem to be the, the solid option at right back. Di Natale, pass forward. Given away completely as AC Milan did retrieve it, but once again finds its way back towards Gabri. And looking for the opportunities here and a bit more patient now for his side off. And that eventually almost gives him a chance here to break free. But what I was speaking about with the narrow diamond, the 4 1 2 1 2, is that. You have to play very narrow. Oh, oh. oh, nine inside the box for AC Milan. Goes for the shot into the front post. It was never looking totally likely that it would go in, but for the side of Crazy, he, he's been on top the majority of this game. It's kind of the same scenario, but we've only seen one chance taken by either team. So maybe we need to see a little bit more. Ibrahim potentially coming on for one of these teams. Just maybe put him in the middle there, the five-star weak foot of the AC Milan guy. And we see Dybala comes in as well. And Chiesa on for, for Ronaldinho. Wow, a lot of trust being put in into that one, for I, I believe, for the side of AC Milan clash. So, not a change I would personally make. <laughs> I, 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 what would be the benefit of, of Chiesa over Ronaldinho? Is it maybe just the pace? I think it's just to get some fresh legs in and... You know, get some something else because, I mean, it's it's a matter of taste. Obviously, you don't want to sub uh, Ronaldinho out, but uh, especially with the attacking players, you want them to have that that small advantage. Oh, it's for Mkhitaryan, sorry, unless he uh, made a change with. Yeah. Him. Oh no, it was it was so Dybala on for for Mkhitaryan, Ronaldinho on for Chiesa. But basically, yeah, it's it's for the fresh legs that could give you that that extra edge, that small edge. Let's follow this corner combination. It's taken short. Back post free to Ibrahimovic. It's a big save. I believe there's... Oh, was he offside? There you go. Offside that time. That looked like a really big opportunity. Well worked corner coming out from the side of Crazy. But unfortunately for him, not working out. Ibrahimovic offside at the back post. Yeah, we got to say he's been, he's been creative with the, with the set pieces so far. Crazy. And it shows that... He feels good, he feels confident, he's, he's been practicing these things and he's really trying to make them work. I also noticed that Gabri changed formation now, he wouldn't continue in the diamond and that could give him the advantage here. Oh, on nine inside the box, cannot wriggle free. Opportunity there for him, but was there maybe a pass on to the left hand side to Ronaldinho? He did very well to work it so far, but... Crazy is not opening up any doors on the defensive side in this game in particular. We'll lose out on the ball here, but that was another opportunity. That was a, an opportunity for Gabri and a dangerous loss of possession here. Could be, see if he can find maybe Ibra inside the box. We know what he can do. The five star skill moves as well. Ball across here from Hullet to Damian. Barella back to Hullet. 
He's got players in front of him. The offside trap coming on through, but is that going to invite the pressure just a little bit more? Spinazzola. Pull it now into Barella. Ibrahimovic on the edge. Kiesa with acres of space as well. Finding his way through. Jinx pass one into Ibrahimovic inside the box. Wonderfully worked from the side of Crazy. It's the cancelled skill coming out. And Ibrahimovic hits the green time. And AC Milan. Ibrahimovic for his team. 2-1 to the good now. And what a turnaround this has been from Crazy. I mean, wow. What a goal. That was an amazing goal from Crazy. And what a second leg. I mean, it shows character the way he's been turning this game around. And I love this goal with the cancel McGeady spin. And he's just exe executing it and exiting in the perfect way. So he gets to his right foot, times it green, near post. It's picture perfect. And I think a lot of players at home, you know, for myself included, and just actually looking at some of the, the, the players on, on the side of Genoa, there's really not a lot of players with a lot of stamina left. Of course, things can change very, very quickly when it does come down to FIFA. But I think what I love about that, especially as somebody who, who knows the McGeady spin cancel and who can use it, it's so important you time that cancel correctly, though, because you can do it and it doesn't put you in any different direction. But for, for Crazy there, times it perfectly. So he's facing goal, right foot's there, and Ibrahimovic finds the goal to get AC Milan back into the lead. What a fantastic turnaround this has been from Crazy. And he's probably coming to this game as not the favourite. And based on that first leg, do you know what? Well, great. Gabri was fantastic. But Crazy has come into his own here in game number two. Yeah, that was, was really impressive. And we talk about the experience of the two players. And he's definitely shown it here in the second leg. And again, Gabri, it's, it's looking hard now, especially because we saw that his players not having a lot of stamina, needs to play this very, very smart in order to, to come back because he wants to apply that constant pressure soon and put all men forward. But it's going to be hard because players are tired. So it needs to be time perfect and his passing display needs to be on point here in order to come back. Well, it may well be here with R9. It's a good save, but it did look like he was offside. Fantastic work there. From the side of AC Milan, they will just about hold it. He, he will, on the other hand, crazy, he will try to play this once more. Don't give the ball away. Yeah, to be honest, waste the time to make sure that... Ga it's called game management. Yeah, <laughs> game, game management. management. And that's how it is. There's money on the line. There's Of course the title on the line, you need to be, be clinical. You need to, to do what you got to do in order to get the win. And I mean, with the second leg he performed here, I will say that this is definitely not on the surf that he's in the lead now. Oh, 100%. Crazy has definitely been the better of the sides, you would say, overall over two legs as Kiesa on side. Is Genoa then back on down? Yes, he is. Kiesa keeping a hold of the ball here for AC Milan. 85 minutes gone. And all of this time has just been wasted. Gabri can't do anything. He may well get one more opportunity if he is lucky. If he can get a hold of the ball. A picture painting frustration in the top left corner. Darmian now just keeping a hold of it. Doesn't need to waste anything crazy. He's just going to run down this clock. 87 minutes. As Gabri... Going to get the opportunity here. Spinazzola is going to be squeezed back to my nan, though. And then this one is knocked forward to Ibrahimovic. Really good management here by the side of AC Milan. Kesa will get away down this left-hand side. The opportunity now for R9 inside the middle as well as Kesa inside the box. Just wasting the time. Smart play here from Crazy. 90 minutes now on the clock. Only with one extra added moment. Potentially for Genoa to get a hold of it. Maldini will get it. This pass will be backwards and AC Milan will move forwards. And it's going to be crazy. Heading in to the final eight in two weeks time. A very, very good performance from the AC Milan man. Yeah, very impressive the way he responded to that first leg where he got outplayed. He just turned it around and showed his character, uh, made the changes that was needed, starting to play faster. Great play. Yeah, really, really good game out of the side 
of crazy and it was just much better than what we've seen in that first leg wasn't it it really was much more impressive from him defensively looked stronger i couldn't have really spoke of any opportunities that we've seen from gabri no i mean the, the ability to adapt on the highest level is is key and i really think that he showed that here crazy and yeah congrats to him and he's through yeah looking good for the side of ac online we're just figuring something out on the other side of things and we'll talk to the boys there in just a second but uh, I think, you know, it's, there's not too much to, to break down in terms of how it worked out tactically for, for the side of Crazy there. He, he looked just really much, a lot, lot stronger, didn't he, in that second game? We talked about the mentality change that came through, definitely looked much more attacking, but it just seemed as if he was, he was finding the opportunities that little bit easier. Yeah, I think we, we spoke a, a bit about with the mentality change. I think that was the thing because tactical wise he was still in, in the four triple two which started to work for him uh, the game started to click for him and and that's the thing about using the first leg to get yourself warm uh, get the feeling uh, make your combinations work and that's pretty much what he did and then he had the margins that's important to mention you need to have the margins when two top players play against each other uh, he could have been behind with more, he didn't, and he took advantage of that, and that was the key in the matchup, I think. Absolutely, you can see Crazy now being interviewed on his side of things to see how he, he felt about that game, and I, I would imagine he'd be feeling very happy heading into the final in a couple of weeks' time. A really good performance from him, and I mean, you know, going in to beat Gabri, Gabri is definitely one of the players you looked at to, to be one of the favourites for this tournament. He's going to have to now drop into the loser's bracket. Yeah, and he won't be happy about that. No. I mean, he will probably be disappointed here for uh, the next few hours, but when he will evaluate, he will think about, okay, if I can play like I did in the first leg uh, tomorrow, then I will have good chances of advancing. Then I just need to convert them because that was his, his main issue. And, and then it seemed like that he didn't have a plan B when plan A stopped working suddenly. So. That's one of the things, or two of the things, that he needs to work out uh, and be prepared with tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. And Well, we are just getting a, a couple of things figured out here, and we will be jumping over towards our analysts. But I think, you know, for, for, for the side of Gabri, he just has to regain, has to now come back into it and just sort of say to himself, right, okay, we didn't have the best time of things that time around. We did have opportunities in that first leg, though, as we look inside onto the highlights. There yeah. was definitely opportunities in that first leg for this one to be a lot more difficult for Crazy. Definitely, um, but... Oh, as, so well worked. Yeah, as we say, you, you got to take your chances on this level because otherwise you will, you will get punished, then your opponent will, and that's exactly what happened. And that just... It just feels like that, that goal here and that chance here gave Crazy the boost to come back into this match, to feel confident in the way he played and... That's really how I saw the second leg, because he started dominating after that. Here we had the, the corner, which was time green as well, but that's why you always have a man on the, on the post, on the, on the set pieces. So, uh, yeah, he, he had the chances here in the second leg. Gabri tried a little bit, but couldn't really find that, that perfect angle where he had the time. Well, that's it in that situation there for that one. That, that's, a, that's really snapped at, isn't it? You, you would like to see an extra pass come on through just to maybe try and find him with that route through. But this was another good ball in and just no opportunity there for the player for Crazy to get anything done. But I believe we can send it over now to the guys on the... I was about to say on the desk, you just have two chairs. But it's over towards, of course, Alex and Zen. Desk, unfortunately, always in. So, but that was a very entertaining first game. And it was something that we spoke about before. Sound about the first leg, obviously for Gabri being one nil, and would it come back to haunt him not finishing those chances? And it did exactly that. Yeah, of course. Uh, we are uh, we are caster cursing in this case, of course. Our <laughs> our friend uh, Gabri, unfortunately for him, though uh, I think a crazy really showed uh, in this uh, second game, in this uh, second leg, he was uh, the best player overall in this uh, in this second game, and uh, I think they almost uh, switched sides because Gabri didn't had a, a didn't have a single chance in the second game, and it was uh, quite difficult for him to overcome. 
some uh, uh, the changes that uh, Gabri, pardon, I am sorry, I, I meant of course uh, Crazy brought in, and uh, it was a really good show for uh, this uh, AC Milan guy who is the first player to qualify for the final eight of uh, of uh, this uh, Isaria team, uh, and uh, of course he will. Obviously, be very happy. Yeah, he'll be over the moon with that. I think there was a lot of maturity in that performance, kind of coming into that second leg, knowing that you know, he didn't perform too great in the first leg. But to just be one goal down, anything can obviously change in FIFA, and that's something that Crazy can take uh, big positives from. And obviously, now qualified for the final eight, we're very happy for that. But if you're Gabri right now, what do you think? If you come back into the losers bracket tomorrow, you've still got a chance to go through, make the top eight. Anything in particular you'd have in your mind? Yeah, of course, you, you will uh, uh, play against the Fiorentina tomorrow yep. and uh, I, I think uh, the tomorrow ones are much more difficult games because of course uh, uh, the pressure is on because if you lose tomorrow you go home and yeah, yeah of course Gabri can't be happy with the today's performance uh, let's hope for him of course he can show better at, uh, tomorrow yeah and we will find out tomorrow we have got game two coming up very shortly we are going to go over to a quick break and we'll be back with you very soon
Hello, welcome back to East Area Team English Broadcast. My name is Chris Tun, joined by Aggie, of course, and we're heading into our second game momentarily. We'll be jumping in in just a moment. Getting this turned over very nice and quickly, the guys downstairs. We've just been shoved up into a studio upstairs, but of course the guys down in the main arena, getting things moving nice and quickly here. But in game number two, we've got Bologna FC 1909 Esports King going up against... Oh, this is going to be a hard one. It, right, how am I pronouncing this? I, it, it, just say it for me one time. Salernitana. Salernitana, is that right? Look, it, it's, there, it's there or thereabouts. I, either way, this should be a good game. Looking at these two players, though, Lone Wolf 92 and Montaxa, both names I definitely recognize from the, the FGS in general. Both very, very good players. Yeah, this is, this is going to be an interesting matchup. It's, uh, it's experience, much experience against one of the players from the new generation who really impressed me. Lone Wolf, as we see for Bologna, is one of the most experienced players who's still playing. I think he started playing back in, in FIFA 2005 or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he's a pioneer. He's probably, yeah. arguably, like historical, one of the biggest names in Italy. And then we have uh, Montaxer, who, who is one of the, the, the new players who really, like, came into the scene, not only in Italy, but also globally, and, and came in with a blast. A very, very talented player. So I'm looking forward to see like the experience against the young power. Yes, it is. It's a, it's the, it's the young v old bull, isn't it, in, in that scenario. But, you know, looking at both these two teams, Bologna coming in, uh, in second in their group, but looking over to uh, Sal Salernitana. I think I've just about got it. We, we'll kind of go with it from there. Uh, second in their group, 14 points respectively for Salernitana and Bologna with the 15. So both these teams second in their groups is something to look as this should be a relatively even game. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to see how they handle the pressure mm -hmm. of playing uh, such an important game now because we are... Uh, at the later end of the competition, yes. not quite there yet, but we're slowly getting there and the pressure starts to come. Uh, the importance of the games are starting to, to kick in and mm -hmm. there can be different ways of handling it. Uh, I, I, I'd like to describe like the new generation to be fearless. Pretty much, they don't they don't think too much about what they're playing. They're just playing their game. They're just, you know, they just want to score goals, pressure high, play aggressive while the older generation, a generation like myself as well, is a bit more, you know, uh, patient and, you, you know, have some other routines and plays a bit different. So it's a nice clash between two players. Yes, absolutely. It is very much one of the, the future and, well, still the present, but a player in Lone Wolf that will be, a, well, you know, he's been around for a long time, still playing well. Obviously at the top of his game to, to be in the winner's bracket side of things, but we will now get into the game. It's Bologna from left to right, of course, in their home kit. And Salonitana in the white from right to left, of course. And just very interesting to see who's going to walk out on top of this one. Montaxa with a very decent record on their side of things. But for Bologna and for Lone Wolf's team, uh, four wins, three draws, the one loss, of course, in their Group A games. And looking over towards the other side of things, for, of course, Montaxa and Salonitana. Four wins, two draws, and two losses. They win Genoa's group in a very tough game, but it is going to be an opportunity here for Montaxa down this left-hand side with R9. Yeah, and we see here a lot of skill moves, a lot of pace in his play, which really describes the generation well. Let's see here, twisting and turning with Ibra, but nice defending from Lone Wolf. And yeah, I think... That sums it up pretty pretty well. He he wants to attack Montaxa. He wants to get the, those goals. He wants to to play aggressive and direct and with a lot of pace. While I think we're gonna see Lone Wolf try to slow down the game a little bit, get the game on his premises, uh, making it close and a tight game where he can take the edge with his experience. Maybe a little bit of build-up player here for Lone Wolf. That slow, methodical play you talked about is going to turn into an opportunity that is fortunately going to find its way into the back of the net. You take those all day long. It was very well worked up until the moment. But I'll be apologizing. I'll be doing the hands up in the air scenario for the celebration. That one is the little rub of the green, but you have to find those opportunities for that to happen. Exactly, and it's it's... 
it's on this level it's a game of margins and you you have to take them and and i mean the pre-work for the chance and for the goal was was pretty good he came into the angle where the finesse was there and sometimes you just have to take the chance and that's exactly oh. what he does <laughs> oh <laughs> salalitana get a one back with montaxa we've seen it so many times in fifa 22 skips that celebration yeah we don't need to see that again dybala with the shot and finds the top left corner. We know his left foot can do that. Doesn't need the four-star weak foot in that scenario. And Salonatana, just like that, won a piece in this game. And that's how to respond <laughs> as fast as possible. And we're back to a draw again. I mean, it's, it's, it's the nicest way and the nicest feeling you can get as a player sitting in that situation to, like you just conceded a goal where you, you will feel hard done. Uh, with it and to be able to respond immediately it just takes off some of the pressure uh, you won't think too much about okay i got a little bit unlucky in that situation you won't think that because you're immediately uh, back into the match and now he's looking for one more potentially here some ball rolls and passes a little bit of room for hull the shot cancel on the edge and eventually it will be played away good defending by lone wolf on the side of balloon yeah but he's going to give this one away kessie into r9 into Ebra, that pass to Dybala works, the green time, the defender gets in the way. That will be a corner ball, short one now to Ronaldinho. R9, edge of the box, Finesse once again, doesn't find the green time, and Kessie, oh sorry, my man will, of course, grab a hold of the ball, very well played. And just something I wanted to, to note, of, of course, I think it's on the side of Bologna, it's that moment's Maradona out on the left-hand side. Oh, that's that's nice. nice. Yeah, that is nice, that is a, is a player you've got to keep an eye on, of course special player with brilliant technique and have that acceleration but also uh, an interesting choice because it's not the not, not the biggest player um, and I believe his stamina isn't the best either but he is a great player let's be honest it's it's not like you feel feel like it's a it's a bad option that's oh. a good through ball oh Ibrahimovic with a really big chance there for Montaxa, he will take the throw in. And that's one of those scenarios, right foot of Ibra. Good opportunity, not a 100% clear cut. Will very much take that one in his stride. Ibra now on the edge of the box. Into Kessi, Ibrahimovic now play the pass. It's very quickly into oh, Ronaldinho's feet, but that one will go out for a corner. The pressure coming in very, very much so for Montaxa. Short once again, Ronaldinho tries to sprint through, but good defending by Mkhitaryan of... All players in. R9 will clear this one away here for a lone wolf. Yeah, we can see that Montaxer is really trying to put the game up to a very high pace game in order to finish his attacks pretty fast. He's, he's not afraid to take the chances. He's, he's gone by with the finesse shots a few times now. He's greened them as well. Uh, it's his strategy and lone wolf on the other hand is playing a bit more controlled wants to be 100% sure about which passes he makes when he decides to go to the attack. And that's a slight difference for now. I think Montaxa responded very, very well and obviously very quick to the goal Lone Wolf scored. So for him now, he just had to, to keep going because I think playing in with, with the speed boost, we see he, he's making a lot as well. It gets him into angles that's not very nice for lone wolf to defend it's really hard for him to actually make it into the time make make into the time to get to the angles and and defend them and he needs to be very aware with his goalkeeper movement oh, as well could we be, need here. be careful here if you are the side of lone wolf so well work the extra pass comes on through you think the shot from Ebra is what's coming and it's just a little layoff to ronaldinho and that moment's card never gonna miss from there Sal and Natana found themselves behind due to a little bit of misfortune, but there's nothing fortunate about that one. Fantastic work by Montaxa, who's now 2-1 up against Lone Wolf. Yeah, quality goal once again. Works his way into the box here. And, and what I also like about his start to this match is that in the beginning he was, he was going for the long shots, for the finesse shots. So Lone Wolf obviously... He has to defend those. He yeah. understood that. So he's starting to perhaps move his goalkeeper a bit in order to protect the angles. And that means that when he decides to move the goalkeeper, Montaxa will have 
more space to play to work the, the ball further into the box and that's ex exactly what he took advantage of here so great play from Mantaxa and gotta say I'm impressed with with his with his ability to keep the game into such a high pace game because he knows that's where he has the advantage. Speaking of high, high pace here's Ronaldinho down the left hand side Bologna and Lone Wolf will just about get this one back. Mkhitaryan down the right hand side running into Teo Hernandez who well I mean all you guys at home will have played up against him he is a right pain to try and get past but that is going to be the half there and that will be a lead for Montaxa. And really, uh, you know, Lone Wolf hasn't really had much to speak about, really, I, I would say. Uh, from his side of things, we, we haven't really seen much from him, apart from that goal that did go in. But I think everybody uh, would realize that there was definitely a touch of fortune there. Definitely, and he won't be too satisfied about the first half, because right now the game is on Montaxa's premises. But, you know, with the experience and routine he has, Lone Wolf, I'm sure he would try to to stay true to his game style, to be honest, and, and try to, to force it into becoming become the way the game turns. See a foo ball here for him. Could Pull be something. Inside the box to R9. Nelly gets there with the slide. Koulibaly will definitely clear, but that was an opportunity there for Bologna. And I think, a, once again, it's such a fortune that it even finds its way heading over towards goal. R9, even from that position, back to goal. Would have taken something special there as Hullet will defend well in the midfield for Bologna now as Montaxa can get this one away for his team. Ibrahimovic, a little bit of room and he's going to send Dybala in down this right hand side. He does have options inside the box looking to try and turn it round. R9 is there ready and waiting for Ronaldinho but does he need him? Yes he does. In the end it's Dybala on the end of it. But how well worked was that for Ronaldinho? The flip-flaps, the cancels, there was everything coming out there, but there's the pass, that's what does it, and Dybala will find another one, 3-1 to Montaxa. Again, lovely work in the box for Montaxa, and I like that he makes this the shooting feint with Ronaldinho, because what's basically happening is that I think he's about to, to pass it um, to Dybala, but he sees that Lone Wolf is, is actually <laughs> follow this, uh, trying to <laughs> reply instantly, but... He sees quickly that Lone Wolf is actually um, is defending the passing angle. So he cancels the pass by making a shooting feint just to make Lone Wolf commit to that because you have to, otherwise he'll just shoot. And then he opens up the passing lane. And again, we see him play with high pace and making very, very good things in the box. Uh, the reverse Elastico once again, which is a deadly weapon in order to find the angles oh. here. Another good save coming out there is Bologna and of course Lone Wolf will try and answer back here. Maradona, four star weak foot on the Argentinian towards the back post. Koulibaly would have liked to take that opportunity but defensive players in the way. Ronaldinho now breaking for this side of Montaxa and for Salernitana. Down this left hand side stretching his legs, the ball in towards the middle to Ibrahimovic. You gotta score those if you're Ibra. That should be four as Salonatana just about stay in the lead here, but it's one of those opportunities you need to see hit the back of the net. That would have been four, and that should have been the game. It was a great chance on a counter-attack for Montaxa, who was very, very fast at using the wings in order to get into those situations where he can either work his way in with, with short passes or he can make the crosses into Ibra, unfortunately for him, he, he just missed it. Maybe if he would have greened the header, it could have been a goal. But regardless of that, it's a good chance. Maybe he even had time to, to take the ball down. But, you know, that's, that's pretty easy for me to say here, sitting on a chair and commentating. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, either way, though, Montax are very much deserving this lead at this moment in time. 3-1 up for Salonatana. I think I've got the name nailed down now. I think I'm just about there anyway. You haven't had to say it yet, but nonetheless, Montaxa very much looking good. Hull it now down this left-hand side. Little check inside, little ball inside towards Ibrahimovic. Mainan does have to get in the way there. But still, I, what's, what's having to change here for Bologna? Because you're going to concede the opportunities. You need to hope that those don't result in a goal. But for Lone Wolf, we haven't seen too many attacking opportunities of his own, really. 
I think the, the major difference for now, we've we just seen that a second leg can change literally everything in terms of who's dominating the game. But I think the difference has, has been like the way they worked their way into the box. Long Wolf haven't really been able to get in there where you will think, OK, that should be a goal. It's been more like a finesse shot or a long shot and hoping it goes in. So you, you, put, you put your faith into, into the margins while Montaxo has taken control over the margin, so to speak. I, I think that's been the major, major difference so far in the game. Clinical from Montaxa, has to be said. Those small opportunities, whether or not you deem them small, have been taken. Very well played. Ten minutes in game remaining here in the first leg. And you are very right, though. It can change in one leg very, very quickly, as we did see in that previous game. But Ronaldinho getting away down this left-hand side. It's the ball in. Ibra can't get there. The defender will for Bologna. And that will be a corner coming up here for Montaxa. But I, I, I think if you see 3-1 to one heading into the second leg, as a player, you would have been in those scenarios as well. You'd probably think, yourself, right, okay, we only need two goals back here. This is achievable. 3 would that be a step too far based on what we've seen? Yeah, I think so. I, I think three goals will, would be too much. Uh, never say never. Of it's course. A, it's, a, it's a tricky... A two-goal lead is pretty tricky to go into. I mean, the worst thing that can happen for Montaxa now is to concede one goal just before the first leg ends because it's, it's, it's just a mental thing as a, as a FIFA player to, to feel like, oh, I... I actually played a really good match and I could have been in front with two and that just takes away so much pressure to have two goals lead while one, it's, it's harder because you don't know which... You don't want to change a game maybe no, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, you, you don't know which foot to, to, to stand on in the second leg. How should I approach this game? An opportunity here though for Lone Wolf. He's trying to get away with Di Baller. He's actually done really well to get this far inside to Maradona. It's a good save by Nainan once again. He's really been on top form in the middle of the, the net time and time again. I've played against him so many times, so frustrating to get past. Is he going to have another opportunity to make a save? Not quite. Salernitana will get this one away. It's an opportunity now for Montaxa to maybe put this one to bed. R9. Now back out to Mkhitaryan. He has Damian on his right-hand side, making the overlap, making the diverting run. Kessie. Back to Mkhitaryan, opportunity here for Montaxa, looking for the pass maybe inside, looking for that little That's bit of room. Pin. Penalty comes on through, turns the right way. Lone Wolf laughs at the opportunity that's now going to be afforded to Montaxa. R9 to take the penalty to make it four, there it is in the bottom left corner. And Salonatana will take a three goal lead at minimum, heading into the second leg unless something changes in the next three in game minutes. I think that that could be the difference, that could be the end of the game. Uh, even just to have a two-goal two, two goal lead into the second leg, it's, there's been a, been a quality difference in terms of how they executed their offensive uh, gameplay in, in the first leg here. And he doesn't look like a player who won't score a goal in the second leg, the way he's been approaching. Again, it's... It's been a bit too much of the, the long shots, the, the Hail Mary, so to speak, for, for Lone Wolf. You have, to get, you have to dig deeper to get closer to the goal. And maybe he could have gone with a power shot before with Maradona, decided to, to go with the finesse shot. But I think, I think it's looking very, very good for Van Taxon now. And I can't imagine he will, he will throw this away. He's been playing too well. There is a final opportunity here, though. For Long Wolf and for Bologna. Is it going to be the ball in here to Ibrahimovic? It's going to be clipped in. Not going to get past though. Maldini and Co. Getting in the way. That ball will be played out. And that will be a lead for Salonatana and for Montaxa of 4 to 1. A fantastic game from him. And just really, uh, for me, I get on top throughout. It, it never felt like Lone Wolf was going to get anywhere with that game. No, it, even after the first goal, which was pretty fortunate for, for Lone Wolf, he just responded instantly, Montaxa, and he played, he played 
very very solid and his his offensive style was was great so yeah it's looking very very hard for long wolf yeah really really hard but i wonder if the guys over on the uh, we're gonna have to deem what i'm gonna call this it's not the desk it's not a couch it's two separate seats it's gonna be alex and zen going through that very first game in this series and yeah it's a it's an uphill mountain so much for lone wolf to try and get back from alex it is a very, very big uphill mountain, and it's actually a game of fine margins because we saw that Maradona chance, which we had with the green time finesse uh, that Lone Wolf did go for, and Aggie did mention maybe the power shot could have been a better option, which possibly it could have, but what happens? Goes down the other end, uh, Montaxa gets penalty and pretty much puts that tie to, to bed, really, which, yeah. as I said, it's a game of fine margins, but I think one thing that we were talking about while we were watching that game that really fascinated me was the, the difference in diversity and variety in attack for Montax. So we saw a lot of long range finesse shots to start off with and then it was like okay well now I've shown you that I'm going to work it into the 18 yard box, look for those shot cancels, skill cancels, the extra pass off across being so crucial and then the ability to even cross the ball, the big chance for me with Himovic. What did you make of it then? Yeah I, I, I loved uh, in this game uh, what uh, Montaxer did uh, um, in front because he was really patient in not uh, um, hurrying uh, to shoot and uh, of course he was uh, paid off uh, massively with uh, this result of course we are seeing the highlights right now and uh, this goal opened up uh, of course uh, um, the match for uh, um, Lone Wolf which is I, I want to mention it and this is something like a, a, son, a son versus father matchup because mm. Lone Wolf is so experienced but also he was the first player selected by a Serie A uh, proper team um, when uh, eSport was, uh, was uh, not uh, you know um, on his biggest fashion like he is right now probably and uh, he created our community I'm from the Italian community yeah. of course and he is a an his historic player but uh, on the other side of course Montaxer really showed why he is one of the uh, representatives of uh, our E Nazionale with uh, the Azzurri shirt of course uh, he's one of uh, uh, the guys playing for the national team and uh, he really showed why he is one of the best youngsters in this uh, E Serie A team and uh, he he played massively well I think in this game uh, he scored uh, four goals of course uh, the final goal was something um, lucky in, uh, in sort of sense because of course uh, you are um, getting to shoot a penalty in the last few minutes and this is like a very difficult uh, uh, situation to overcome for yeah. uh, a lone wolf of course he's a very expert player but uh, I think the three goals margin here is it's going to be too much for him. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a big thing to take into account, isn't it? That penalty in the last few minutes of that game. If you're two goals down, you know, there's a possibility you can pull that back. You're 90 minutes in FIFA can go by quick, but you can pull back two goals very, very easily if you play the perfect game. But three is asking a lot. And do you think now Lone Wolf has got a claw back on previous experiences? You said about that experience, you know, how long he's been around now. He's got to think back to the times where, you know what, I've been 3-0 down essentially, going into a second leg, and he can come back and possibly do that again. Would you imagine that's something that we're thinking about? Well, I, I think he, he honestly could uh, because he is a very experienced yeah. and, of course, talented players to play for so long in our community. But, uh, yeah, Montaxer looks like he's on another level right now. Yeah. Um, he played very, very well. He was able to concretize all, the, all his chances and also uh, created uh, a lot uh, of chances that weren't actually... Um, uh, giving us, uh, giving him, uh, sorry, um, another goal. But uh, uh, he, he was the best player in the pitch on the pitch. Uh, yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, it's gonna be really difficult for Lone Wolf at this time. Yeah, definitely. I think for anyone at home that's watching and admiring Montax, he can take a lot of kind of uh, opportunities, which you saw, as I said, with that finesse shot, working it into the 18-yard box, and the way he can dribble with the ball at his feet, looking for that extra pass off across, works really, really well for Montaxa. So if you're watching, you can maybe take a, a note or two and then start implementing it into your own game of FIFA, which obviously will help you get better and hopefully score more goals. So we are going to go ahead and jump in to the second leg as we pass things back over to Chris and Aggie for the commentary. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you very much, Zen. And that 
I, I mean, it kind of rings true, doesn't it? It's, it's one of these situations where, for Lone Wolf, he is one of the founding fathers of, of FIFA in Italy right now, but maybe this is the new guard coming on through with somebody like Montaxa, who really did put him to the sword there. We can talk about, look, you know, the penalty coming through in those final moments, yeah, but, I mean, the, no, nothing more lucky than the first goal that came through for Lone Wolf, of course. Yeah, it was... was uh... One lucky goal for each. Oh, my, my controller concede, is getting thrown yeah. if I concede that during weekend league. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's a hard one to concede, but Montaxa very much replied against it. Yeah, and I think, I think in in the game, it wasn't really uh, visible for for us that it was the experienced player against the, the the young gun. It it was he handled the the, the unfortunate start very well, uh, Montaxa. So uh, I mean. He's looking very, very dangerous, uh, and I think his mindset for the second leg here will be: I want to score more. I want to, uh, to, to, to. Ch ch I won't stop playing offensive FIFA now. I, I'll keep going. I'll, I'll keep playing direct. I'll keep doing my, uh, my shoot cancels, um, my reverse elasticos, etc. I, I think he'll, he'll keep playing aggressive and. and be loyal to his game style while Lone Wolf will try to to mix things up now obviously he has to put some more risk into his game style he have to take more chances now because it's a lot of goals to to come back to no opportunity here for Salon Hatana already Montaxa looking to try and open things up but I think you're right we are probably going to see more opportunities in this game come for Lone Wolf but ultimately will probably result in more opportunities for Montaxa Lone Wolf needs to come out the gate screaming here, really. We need to see a couple of goals come, I would say, probably in this first half pretty rapidly if he wants a chance here to advance on to the final eight in two weeks' time. And also, it's, it's going to be important for, for Lone Wolf that he plays this second leg smart because it's obviously he's he will feel a bit, a bit stressed. It's three goals, but... It won't be to any matter if he's, he gets behind uh, instantly here in the second leg with more than three goals, then it's, then it's done. So it still needs to be controlled in some sort. And then if, if nothing really happens for him, if, if he can't really find the chances, maybe it's in the second half that he just had to say, OK, I'd rather lose with potentially five, six, seven goals and, and chase the three goals now than just stick to my style and yeah. have just, just lose with three, right? So. Here in the beginning, maybe see the game a bit out and see where some potential opportunities can be. Um, and if that doesn't change things up a lot or enough, then go all out attack. Opportunity here, yeah, maybe he was trying to feed it through to hull it with R9. Not going to work out this time, but I think you're realistically very right. I think, you know, the first, I would say, even the first half, if you can maybe just feel it out, play a slow game, find a goal back, then, you know, maybe just keep playing that way. But I think if we don't see anything coming in, maybe even by 30 minutes, we may well see things get, have, well, have to get turned up by the side of Lone Wolf for Bologna now. Movement forward here for Salonatana not working out. And is this potentially where things are going to open up for Bologna? Not quite. Salonatana once again with the ball. Yeah, and definitely. I mean, Lone Wolf is as as we've been speaking about, he is a pioneer in, in, in Italian FIFA and he is arguably the most experienced guy so he also know what his strengths are and his, his, his abilities and he's not trying to be someone else in the way he plays, he sticks to his play style because he knows that's what, where he has the biggest chance of succeeding if he starts to to oh. be, that's, un that's a bit unfortunate yeah. to be honest, it's a good through ball, um, yeah could have been a free run but I, th I think you're right though with what you're saying in the sense of that he is just wanting to play the same way and while playing the same way he's found his way through, it would be a wonderful goal if he can find a great defending by the side of Montaxa, a little bit of fortune is there, but here comes Lowell well, very much knocking on the door, Kessie now to hull it. Back to Kessie, into Maradona, into R9 on his left foot, and there's the goal that he needs. It's going to be Lone Wolf to bring one back. 4-2, the deficit, now only two. And R9, a fantastic finish on his left foot, will find his way back into the game here for Bologna. And that's what R9 does. He scores goals with his right foot, with his left foot. And what I like about this goal is that 
Lone Wolf starts with having two pretty big chances that gets blocked. And instead of you know frustrating, it, it, it could it could be like for many players in that scenario, it would be tough because you're behind with three. You really want those margins to come to you. He just stays calm, work his way into the box again and find the angle and scores. And that's an ability uh, that Lone Wolves have and has gotten with his huge experience. So maybe game on. I mean, we, we saw the game before. Obviously, it's a bit of a different scenario, but... Maybe game on if that went through for R9. Really tilts me that he's wearing the number 10 shirt, actually. <laughs> but nonetheless, here we are. Ronaldinho down the left-hand side here, though, for Montaxa. Mm -hmm. Can he answer back like we've seen previously? Dybala on the edge, a little bit of room. Ibrahimovic with more of it, though, and there's the top left corner. It answers back immediately for his team. Montaxa with a brilliant, brilliant goal. It's the crossfield ball, it's the pass inside. Ibrahimovic, acres of space. And there you go, there's that three goal deficit restored once more. Lone Wolf has it to do it once more, all again. And once again, he greens the finish and it just gives you the, those extra percentages of having the chance of scoring and yeah, handle it very well that he perhaps didn't get the best start here on the second leg. And it, it can be hard, even if you're leading with three, Mentally, you can't yeah, be... How does he want to maybe change things yeah. or something like that, yeah. You don't maybe want to play as aggressive as you did in the first leg because you feel like, okay, I don't want to take unnecessary risks. But that can be like some sort of sleeping pillow as well, where you basically gives away the initiative to your opponent. And that's such a hard balance to, to find. And that's, that's some of the mental things that he can maybe learn of in the future. Uh, and use these games too. Ibrahimovic trying to find a way through. Maldini, the pass across the Kula Valley was a little bit uh, a little bit risky, but nonetheless, Bologna and Lone Wolf will survive that momentary scare. Kessi now to Maradona. Clip ball forward was not the option there. Dybala will not get on the end of that one, and Salonatana will survive, presumably for the rest of the half. You would imagine he will just see this one out. No need to give the opportunity over towards Bologna to maybe try and find another goal. Lone Wolf still with that mountain to climb. As we head into the 45th minute, there will be no added time in this half, but it's going to be an attack for Salonatana. And, of course, for the side of Montaxa, trying to break through with Ibra, and that will surely be the end of the half. This one is going to be clipped forward. Is Koulibaly going to get on the end of it there? Just maybe a slight scare for Bologna. This one will be put out of play. And Salonatana still with that three-goal deficit to try and come back from for Bologna Esports, but still very good FIFA for Montaxa. Yeah, very nice response to what could have been an uncomfortable situation for him going into the second half here of the second leg. Um, and it looks like you're going to have loads of fun with pronouncing Salernitana. Salernitana. I, I think I've been, I've been doing okay. Are we doing okay? <laughs> We're doing okay. Look, I don't know if you're trying to say that I'm saying it wrong. Am I saying no, it wrong? No, no. <laughs> no. Slowly pro progressing here. Oh, okay, and, I'm and, getting there. <laughs> and and I, I think you're doing well, mate. Definitely. Thanks. So I mean, it, it's been it's been a it's been a it's been a pleasure to be honest to see Montaxa plays, and I had pretty high expectations for him when I saw, okay, I'm going to watch him play because it's a player that people speak about. It's a player people have high hopes for, not just here in Italy, but also globally. It's it's one of those, uh, it's not a hidden gem anymore. It is no. just a, it's just a gem who can go very, very far um, with his FIFA abilities. And he's trying to show it here. Great ball in, oh, the red tight. And it nearly goes in nonetheless. And that was a huge opportunity for Lone Wolf to get back into the game once more. I think that he mistimes it. It, it, does, looked, it, was red. it looked like a red. And you need to convert those. And, and especially the timing of scoring a goal now, it just it buys you time, literally, to maybe you know, extend the pressure, to, to wait to put all-out attack on. It will frustrate him because that was, that was a chance for me to score. Huge on. chance. Instead, he could be responding oh, to that yeah in a bad spot now is Ibrahimovic oh, maybe he was looking for a scoop to try and turn him inside there but unfortunately the normal fake shot comes through and Ibra cannot find the room for Montaxa he will defend that initial counter attack very very well though and we'll have another stab at it here as Darmian the ball will be played out wide pass is on inside maybe looking for a moment to try and find it Kessie 
to hull it now and Kessie once more. Just this, this possessional play from Montaxa works out very well in his favour. Yeah, and I think we'll also start to see the match change a little bit in terms of how Montaxa is approaching the game, becoming a bit more patient in the way he builds up and, and how long time he takes on the ball when attacking, making the attacks longer. So, yeah, as we, we spoke about before, it's, it's time management and doing it the smart way in order for Lone Wolf not to get too much on the ball and be able to actually launch not just one, not just two, but three attacks that can bring him back to the match. But it's looking tough. There could be something here, maybe. Oh, well, it was a good opportunity. It came into Hullet's feet very, very quickly. Couldn't get the shot away. And maybe a little bit of room for Ibra here. It's a delicious ball by Dybala. Zlatan Ibrahimovic in the box. Good defending once more, though. And that one will go out for a corner for Bologna. Something has to change here now. It's getting a little bit late in the day to be maybe playing a little bit passively. We need to see a bit more of an attacking threat from the side of Lone Wolf. Definitely. And I think we're going to see that now. It's probably going to be, as, as the word I used before, the Hail, Hail Mary comes in now where he just needs to, to risk everything pretty much to get back. And on the other hand also, which I quickly noticed, was that Montaxer changed up his formation as well. In the first leg, he started out with the narrow diamond, the 4 one 2 one 2 and he switched to a 4-4-2, so a bit more balanced formation where you're covered more on the wings, yes. where it allows you to keep possession a bit more comfortable than if you're playing with a lot of players centrally. So a smart move, to be honest, because that's neutralized the game a bit more. It did make him vulnerable in, in certain scenarios. So again, when, when we have s such big prizes on the line, the title, uh, the playoff spots. You're gonna, you're gonna do what's necessary. You gotta, you gotta play smart, even though perhaps you're eager to score more goals, to to make the beautiful plays. It's, it's just how, how you win games and how you win titles. Well, there may be an opportunity to put this game to bed for Ronaldinho, not gonna work out for Salonetana. This is an opportunity to maybe counter attack for Bologna, and of course for Lowen. Well, not gonna play out though. As Damian will get this one forward once more. 65 minutes coming in on the clock. Debala here for Salonetana. Now to Kessie to hold it. Lone Wolf just needs every single little bit of luck that he could possibly want now to try and get back into this game. It's still a three goal deficit to try and claw back as quickly as he possibly can. Dybala into Ibra, the header across for R9. And that's going to be the goal to maybe just about finish it as Montaxa will find a sixth in this game. Six to two, and surely Agi now, that has got to be the game. Yeah, I think that was it. Um, a full ball to Ibra, who has been very efficient for Montax, have been not only dangerous in the box, but also been very good at just using him as, yeah, the target man to, to get the ball protected and pass it on. And that's exactly what happens on, on this goal. He, makes the full ball and he heads it into the central where, well, the, in my opinion, the best finisher in the game, or 9 is there and he's not going to miss that chance. Uh, it's not coming a day where he's going to miss that. And yeah, I think that's GG. It's feeling that way. But is there maybe going to be more insult to injury here? Added by Salonatana and of course for the side of Montaxa. Lone Wolf, it really is now do or die. Maradona. Jenkins side and again it, it feels like the, the tactics need to change very very quickly but then you become more susceptible to conceding goals. Blinkanovic Savage here, pass inside to Hullet, then forward to R9, back inside for Maradona, it's really well worked, out to Ibrahimovic here for Bologna, inside is Paolo Dybala, it's a brilliant brilliant goal from Lone Wolf but is it just maybe a little bit too late, it's one back, it's 6-3, to three. there maybe is still time but it will be a very tall order with only 13 game, in-game minutes remaining on the clock. Yeah, if he would make the comeback, it would be... It's a great goal, though. Yeah. It's a great goal. It's, it's, it's very nice to uh, play once again and just making sure to, to, to make the right decision. You also see that Montaxa is, is, is baiting with his goalkeeper, just going a little bit out to, to try to make him take a shot, perhaps. But instead, he just stays calm, make the cross into Dybala, who 
jumps pretty high, actually. I mean, it's it's not a, a small center back he's up against there in the air, but a nice play from Lone Wolf. And, and to be honest, I think Lone Wolf has done many things right in the second leg. I think he, he, he played his chance, but it just haven't been enough today. And he can be happy with, with the oh, second leg. Well, I'll tell you what, maybe if R9 could have broke through there, then maybe we have a very entertaining last 10 minutes. And Salah Natana and Montaxa will survive that momentary scare. I think now that, oh, he's... He's pressing. Yeah, he's giving the ball away and you, you don't want to even make your opponent think at this moment of the game that he has a chance of making just something. But again, he has to force the, the game a little bit because clock is ticking and yeah it's 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 over now i think i am gonna have to be realistic here even though I, I i love a comeback it's it's going to be too tough and i think that he he will try to just yeah run down the clock now maybe potentially try to get one more goal here in the end because he also knows that oh it's ahead. wonderfully yeah, played it's wonderfully played by montaxa the header across goal, there's Ibrahimovic for another one for the side of Solentana and it's just been a brilliant game of FIFA from Montaxa. Throughout the whole game, he has looked the better side. He's looked more likely to score at every single opportunity that has been offered his way. Bologna and Lone Wolf, no answer for the young bull in Montaxa who is looking like he's going to advance on now to the final eight in two weeks. But maybe he's a consolation here for Lone Wolf to die. Ball are in! Great save by my nine once again. And it just, it just feels like the opportunities maybe have been there for Lone Wolf, but hasn't been able to convert them necessarily as easily as Montaxa. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, for me at least, that you've never really been in doubt that even if Montaxa would concede some goals, he would also score some. He, he, he's been too confident in, in the way he attacks and that's been the difference. So congratulations to Montaxa. He will go through here uh, and it is deserved. Very much deserved. Very much the dominant force in that game. Lone Wolf just did not have the answers for Montaxa today. Salonatana and Montaxa will advance on through as both players shake hands. Very much respectable from both sides, but Montaxa... He is going to be a scary, scary prospect for anybody inside that final eight. What a performance there. And I'm sure the guys over on this, on their, wait, we're just going to call you the chairs, okay? The chairs with the talking heads. Alex and Zen will talk you through that game. Fantastic performance from Montaxa. Zen, what a game that was. Ten goals across yeah. both legs, which uh, I think we all enjoyed watching that one. It's something very exciting. I think for me, watching Montaxa, that was probably one of the most best performances i've seen in making the opponent guess what we're doing you know you saw lone wolf struggling thinking is he going to go for a cross here the finesse working it to the byline there was a lot of variety what did you make of the performance yeah it was basically unstoppable if i had to sum up in a in just a word it was unstoppable montaxer yeah. today he won both of the matches of course in the second leg he was play, playing uh, probably uh, in a more in a lighter way mm -hmm. i i'd yeah. say he, of course, uh, he had uh, basically zero pressure coming up, coming on uh, in the second leg, and uh, he really showed uh, his uh, talent, his raw talent. Uh, uh, Agge, of course, uh, mentioned it. Uh, he's not uh, a hidden gem anymore. He's uh, um, a gem that is showing his full potential right now. And uh, of course, he is the second player who, who gets qualified for the final eight. And uh, let me say uh, something about it as well, because he is the second player out of two that is both playing for the I Nazionale, for the Azzurri uh, team uh, in, uh, in FIFA 22. And uh, of course, he's the second player out of two who is uh, going uh, um, in the final eight. So a uh, very, very good show. Uh, so far for uh, our e nationale yeah definitely and uh, as we said it was a, a mature performance in the sense of coming into that second leg knowing that we've got that lead uh, and lone wolf was going to come out and be that little bit more aggressive and try and press and he dealt with that very easy we, we heard chris mention it how it was you always felt comfortable that for montaxa that even if lone wolf got a goal or two there was always going to be more goals you know in the locker for montaxa yeah. 
Yeah, of course, uh, the raw talent uh, is uh, very, very massive, uh, I think, in, um, uh, in uh, modern taxers' end. Uh, and of course, he has to be very, very happy because uh, he showed uh, in, this, um, in this match uh, that he's a strong contender for the final title, I think. Of course, he's now in the final eight. Of course, uh, he's now in the top eight players uh, in this uh, E-Serie A team. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, he showed why. And, uh, he was a. Uh, he showed really well why he's one of the best right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and if you're Lone Wolf, you drop down into the losers bracket. So we'll come back tomorrow and, and have that chance to try and still make that top eight. How would you approach that if you are Lone Wolf? Would you change anything? Would you say, you know what, on the day, uh, Montaxi was just better than me? Or do you think there needs to be some conversations there? Well, I think that not only for Lone Wolf, but uh, for all the players, uh, it's going to be difficult to face Montaxer yeah. in these playoffs because he looked very, very strong in this game. And I'm going to say it again. And uh, uh, I think Lone Wolf tomorrow could try something different, probably on the attacking side, but also on the defensive side. He, he wasn't solid today. He conceded, I think, seven goals seven in goals, the yeah. two legs, um, of course, uh, together. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. not uh, the best performance for uh, his uh, long career. And uh, he should have the ability, though, to, to change something uh, in the positive way, uh, looking for uh, tomorrow's matches. Yeah, and that, that is a crazy thing with FIFA. Obviously, we can all play different on each day. So I'm sure Lone Wolf, when he comes back tomorrow, will have a new approach, fresh approach, and hopefully put in some better performances. One thing I did want to say as well, though, that last goal from Montaxa, where we crossed it into the near post, and then R9 flicking it back on to Ibrahimovic, the composure to be able to do that and you know still go for those goals, that was just exceptional, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I, I, I agree with you, but of course you could argue that was the seven goal and he also had already a free goal margin for uh, in favour of himself, of course, Montaxer. So, you know, when you are winning by a fine margin like that, yeah. of course, you have no pressure, you can try also some spectacular extra passes uh, and uh, I think Montaxa really showed uh, again uh, why he's one of the best. Uh, also with this uh, final goal of this uh, match, uh, which was, I think, uh, one of the best uh, we saw today. Yeah, it was and we mentioned it as well after that first like about how Montaxa had that variety and attack to be able to do different things each time. I think that's something that Lone Wolf struggled to kind of adapt to. Mm. There was one goal in that second leg, I think it was the second one, where he whipped it in from really far back from deep, finding the man at the back stick and then laying it back off into the edge. And I think that was something that worked really, really well for Montaxa. So again, if you're sat at home and you're thinking, how can I get better at FIFA? Mm. Looking at those sort of different goals that we've seen from Montaxa is certainly something that can help. But it will be interesting to see, can he get a little bit tighter in defence as well? Because if you can score seven, goals across two legs and even keep the opponent out maybe to only one goal you're going to be in for a, a good run aren't you so yeah it definitely was a uh, an interesting game as we do go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights and you can just see fancy footwork coming off across finding the Maradona a big big chance there Maradona unfortunately not finding the back of the net for Lone Wolf uh, I don't think we, Lone Wolf used Maradona maybe as much as he would have liked to you had him on that left hand side trusting that he could get that shot off a cross goal but never really finding a finesse shot obviously being on that left hand side or something maybe that he would be a little bit disappointed with and maybe change into the future. Maybe. But as we said, we did see some uh, some fantastic goals throughout this game. We see Maradona working it off. Finding that R9 and that ability to turn and just sending that defender and finding that weak foot. And that's why the five-star weak foot is so crucial. We always talk about it being such a big thing. And, and this is the one here. Ronaldinho switching it into that back seat. Dybala picking it up, finding the Ibrahimovic. The green time finish being absolutely crucial. Again, you're watching at home and you're thinking, how can I bury my chances, give myself the best possible opportunity to score, bringing in green time finishing, pressing the shoot button and then pressing it again as your player is about to strike the ball. And Ibrahimovic on his weak foot, he's not, weak foot there, he's not going to miss, is he? No, he's not, because he's one of the best uh, attackers yeah. in our in our e Serie A, of course. And of course, uh, Ronaldo as well is one of the best. And I, I think uh, um, the the thing that uh, really amazes me from Montaxer is uh, the creativity on uh, the last 25 meters of yeah. the pitch. Because uh, he, uh, as you mentioned, of course, Alex, he showed that he can score uh, with the uh, 
with the crosses, uh, with the, like uh, um, creative maneuvers. Yeah, th and that, that being front. a big one there. We yeah. saw him dink the ball over into Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic chests it down and then lays the ball back off to R9. So many FIFA players at times, especially at the top level, can get a little bit stuck in their ways of you know trying the skill moves on the edge of the box and you know doing the fancy footwork. But something like that really, really caught Lone Wolf kind of off guard. Uh, and finding the back of the net from it was a was a lovely goal. As I said, there was a lot of variety as we just see Ibrahimovic coming through and let's, let's not say that it, you know we did have a lot of chances for Lone Wolf we saw yep. that one where Hullet he tried to time the volley it just dragged wide unfortunately managing to get a goal back there obviously with Dybala a bit of composure to look for that cross instead of just hitting it Aggie mentioned it at the time the goalkeeper movement from Montaxa just meant that it gave Lone Wolf a little bit to think about but he was still calm he was still composed and Dybala managing to out jump Maldini and uh, finding the back <laughs> of the net with that one as well and obviously it was 6-3 on aggregate the 84th minute it was always going to be very difficult for Lone Wolf to pull this one back and get back into it but look at that the cross yeah. into the near post R9 just flicks it back on and finds that spare yeah. man yeah he's, he's like giving back the favour he had previously uh, R9 uh, in, in favour of Ibrahimovic yeah. this time uh, the uh, assist men and, uh, and the goal scorers swapping uh, each other and uh, yeah that's uh, really beautiful again from uh, from uh, Montaxer of course uh, Mattia Guarracino Lone Wolf had to force uh, a little bit more in this, second, this, this second leg if, uh, uh, if uh, he, he wanted to have, have the chance to come back of course uh, he couldn't but uh, we are gonna see uh, him uh, of course uh, tomorrow let's see of course if he can grab this uh, final eight spot yeah definitely and Lone Wolf as we said isn't out he will go through into that losers bracket and come back tomorrow to try and get into that final eight and it will be very interesting to see whether Lone Wolf can do that and I think that's something we can look forward to can't we of course um, um, I think Mattia is a very experienced player yeah. that the of course, he's going to give everything tomorrow to stay in this competition. Yeah, definitely. So he's going to go home now, I'm sure, get a bit of extra practice in, a good night's sleep, and then come back tomorrow. We are going to go over for another break, and we'll jump into our next game very shortly. Get ready for this. I get up, I won't let up, I'm getting better 
saying you don't love me Put no one above me But when you sip that bubbly You lose yourself, it's ugly Trying to run me down and tell your friends that I ain't Then 3 a.m. you text and have you all up on my Ain't it funny though? Always spend the money Buy you this, buy you that Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, we have got a very entertaining game coming up very shortly. We'll be looking forward to bringing that to you. Recently for Serie A, they have launched the Keep Racism Out campaign, which is something that you guys can support at home as well as ourselves here. On the virtual and the real world football, we're coming together to take a stand against all types of discrimination. You can get access to the lovely Keep Racism Out kit in-game right now on FIFA 22 by going into your objectives and completing that what's on there. We want to keep racism out of stadiums, raising awareness among football fans in both real and virtual worlds, fighting against all types of discrimination. Yeah. And that is a kit which I will be rocking myself when I get home on Ultimate Team for sure. Now, next game coming up, we have got uh, Karizmak, who is going to be kicking things off against Auburn, which is going to be a very entertaining game. Looking forward to it. You got any predictions for that? Well, it's really hard to, to predict uh, this game, of course, because uh, we have maybe uh, two of the best players yeah. uh, playing against each other. Of course, two uh, national representatives for us, for Italy. Yeah. Uh, on the E Nazionale, of course, Auburn uh, um, smashed the competition in the in the qualifier, but uh, the two guys are both uh, in into the national team and of course uh, it's gonna be I, I think a banger of a match this one uh, yeah definitely and, and like you said both being part of the national team they're gonna know each other very well I think mm -hmm. Karim's ranked number one at the minute over on that side uh, and fifth for Auburn so it's gonna be an entertaining game obviously they're gonna have a mutual friendship obviously working together on the national side of things so they're gonna know a little bit about each other and how they play and play styles and kind of what to expect so how do you think that plays a part? I think that plays a big part because if you know if you know your opponent's mentality, your opponent's uh, game style as well, you can have like responses yeah. uh, for him uh, in the in the particular game. But at the same time, uh, knowing what uh, your opponent is gonna do can be also um, uh, disguising yourself yeah. at the same time because uh, if it does uh, something different, uh, you are not as well uh, as prepared, uh, of course. And uh, I think uh, this is a very pivotal match because, of course, uh, we we can mention the also we can also mention the fact that uh, um, uh, from the loser bracket, of course, who loses uh, this game is going to the loser bracket, and on the loser bracket is going probably to meet uh, Danny Pitbull yeah. of who. who of course, he's the reigning champion of the uh, last year uh, Iseria team uh, and uh, is, of course, uh, really, really big. But uh, I think the game is starting, Alex. So let's get uh, back to our casters. Thank you very much, guys. And yeah, they're very much getting onto the point that this game has a lot of implications. Of course, how many of the players we've been looking at so far today? These are very much two of the best. Definitely. And I mean, it's not just our opinions it's it's facts. Yeah, well, exactly it's yeah facts. exactly uh looking at the at the global series ranking you have you have number one here in the euro beast and you have number five i i mean it's it's remarkable uh and for two giants to play each other this early so to speak in the competition is is massive and especially with that extra addition that potentially the loser can be playing the reigning champ tomorrow, Danny Pitbull, potentially. That's just massive. And I'm really looking forward to see this match between two world-class players who, who have the potential, because they showed it so far in this season, to not only win this trophy, but to potentially become the best player in the world. Well, let's see. They've got to get past each other first, of course. For Venezia, in the black kit from left to right and of course is going to be Karim is back in on the other side for Torino it is Obrun 2002 and Obrun with a really good chance here getting inside the box Dybala into R9 it's just so well we're back to R9 what a goal that is from Torino and from Obrun two three four extra passes than you would have expected and R9 opens things up what a play what a play what a passing display I mean Looking at those first touch passes and just that was probably for me the best goal I've seen so far. 
because it's so hard to make things look look easy and especially on this level and it's not with skill moves it's just passing display and that's that's pretty unique that's very rare to see on on this stage and this level of the game that you can be able to do that and he's just keep threatening to to shoot and instead he just finds the passing angle so what a start for Oberon and Torino and I think it's one of those opportunities that will now have Karima's back thinking about what's going to happen next time an attack comes on through. Shot from outside of the box from Ball. that's not even going to get past the first defender. And that ball clipped forward now for our nine is going to be intercepted by Koulibaly. Team Lorenzo going to carry this one away, but a little bit of shock and awe for Venezia and for Karima's back because that was a phenomenal, phenomenal goal from Abrun. And now moving forward is Zakaria. Inside now to Hullet. Back to Zakaria in the middle of the pitch. Ball back now to Maldini. Back to Zakaria once more. Ronaldinho in the middle of the pitch now as well. Trying to move this one forward. Ronaldo can't quite find the pass to the outside. Oh, cut through ball. R9 will be caught up by Maldini. But so back and forth already. Definitely, you can see that at the moment when Obrun gets the ball on his health, he's looking for that direct pass that can actually split it up but it could be on the other hand here oh, Ronaldinho inside the box and the Elastico not going to find its way through and we're just trying to bait out the shot and turns looks for the pass but that doesn't work either good defending coming in here on the side of Venezia after what was a, a big opportunity there but a player I actually didn't expect to see in there of course it will be headline as Zakaria not someone I, I really thought would, would be in and amongst it but already Seeing him on the ball quite a bit, a very, very solid card. I actually completed him myself when he was playing in the Bundesliga, but of course now in Serie A. And making a good go of it, has to be said. Very big central midfielder. 87 pace, 88 defending, 91 physical, but also has the passing stats to get it out. But here we go for Torino. Not going to work out this time around for Oberon. That attack does get nullified. I like the fact that every time Oberon intercepts the ball or, or gets it, He's just looking forward, 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 forward. And he's looking for those quick counters and opportunities to finish his attacks pretty fast and then be structured and solid in the defense. And again, we see it here. Some of the fruit balls could be dangerous R9, but Koulibaly comes in and... He's a great defender. Yeah, there's been some vari variation between the midfielders and the offensive players, but the two center backs, it's Koulibaly and it's Maldini. Has to be really, doesn't it? Maldini is, is a stable. I will say this, yeah, though, with some of the moments cards, at least players like like Nesta and uh, Benucci, their moments cards are actually really usable this year. It has to be said. I don't, Alex didn't even nod when I looked at him when I said that. Do you agree or not what we're saying? Yes? No? Yeah, nodding. Thank you. I, I just thought I was maybe just talking absolute rubbish for, well, as per usual. But players like that, of course, who did play in Serie you know, guys like that are definitely someone you can look at for your teams if you want. Maybe a little bit of a cheaper option than, uh, than moments Maldini. Of course, but moving this one out this time around, it is going to be Venezia once again. Karim is back looking to try and get back into this game. Brahim in the middle. Another player, an SBC, a player for AC Milan with a five-star weak foot. Can kind of be used in that central midfield role, but it's very much an attacking player. Hullet now forward to R9 here for Torino. Ball clip forward. Is Ibrahimovic going to get on the end of this one? Yes, he is. Is it going to be the pass inside or is it going to be the shot? It's the pass. It's the movement. It's the pass back and... Well, that's a scenario sometimes where you maybe take it one step too far. Or Bruin could have pulled the trigger a couple of times there. Jesus not to, goes to the pass and the chance goes awry. And that's a situation where you would say that if he actually scores on that, he's a genius. Like, I mean, then the play is, is amazing. But on the other hand, I feel like it's important to say that that was amazing defense from Kareem as well because he, he didn't commit too much with his centre back. He was disciplined. He made sure to cover the angles but this is a dangerous offside trap good ball the offside trap doesn't work and Ronaldinho can't quite pull the trigger in an effective way and now it's an opportunity counter attack here for the side of Venezia and for Karuma's back Ronaldinho has got to potentially be the option here pass back now to Zakaria now into Ronaldinho with a double tap round nine on the edge of the box back to Zakaria the pass is wayward and that's maybe where he doesn't fit in as well as some Somebody maybe like Borella or Kessie, his passing's not quite on the same level. Yeah, could be an option, but here's a good at interception by Hullet. And just maybe slowing the pace down a little bit. He's been 
very very lethal on the counter attack so for Oberon and yeah it was it was maybe a bit of, of the curse of the commentator before where I was just applauding uh, Kareem's defense because I really thought it was <laughs> world class defense but then there was a, a mistime of side trap and they're very dangerous you need to time them and execute them perfectly but it's at the same time they're so important to push your uh, defending line higher up so you don't give any space for your opponent but yeah as we can see 1-0 here at half time and I don't think it's necessarily undeserved I think he had a small edge it's a tight game it is tight. but Obron just seemed to work his way in to the box slightly better and has a slightly better chance Fantastic work from Auburn, and it has to be said, we'll, we'll go through that goal again on the highlights later on. All the guys over, of course, in the studio will do at least anyway. A sublime goal when it comes down to FIFA. Fantastic work by Auburn, who will find them. Well, he will find himself in the lead for his team, Torino, of course. And well, it has been everything we kind of promised, but that ball's been given away by Torino. R9 here at the beginning of the second half, and Ronaldinho just trying to find a way through cannot. It's a slight little bit of, well, small mistake from Torino. Kessie will get this one away, but you have to be careful. Both these players can really capitalize on any sort of mistakes, and those mistakes will be few and far between. You really do have to be careful. Ronaldinho down the left-hand side here for Torino. The pass inside, Hullet is poor. And this time around, Venezia will get this one away. Yeah, as you say, you don't want to give the ball away centrally in the build-up play. That is the dangerous place to do like it, and that. here we see it again. It is mistakes that can be punished on this level with two players with so much quality in their game style will be able to punish but so far they've been very good at fixing good their mistakes in oh. the build up. Oh, on the edge was looking for that final pass, it was a really good play up until that moment, Raheem in the middle getting it done, the dribbling stats on that guy, very much able to twist and turn, the left stick dribbling from him very very strong. And it also results in very good pressing play from both players that they're forcing each other to make some mistakes sometimes. Seen that Karim is, is trying a bit with the lofted passes, which haven't clicked yet for him, but I like it that he's trying to, because it can be so efficient of, you know, making your opponent think that he's actually in an angle to intercept the ball and then it just goes, free, uh, goes through to the striker, so it's a very efficient move in terms of passing play and can be vital together with the through ball that we saw here. Could be something here. Ronaldinho, edge, oh, he looks for the double tap pass to try and get it through to R9. Not gonna work out this time and Torino will survive. Still the lead for Torino. I know Brun at this moment in time. From his back, we haven't really seen any big opportunities yet, have we? Hasn't been able to unlock the defense. Yeah, as I said, tried a few times with the lofted passes so far but haven't really worked out for him yet but this is an interesting oh, combo. great ball oh my word Ibrahimovic and that's why he's in the team for Torino the headed ball down R9 from there does not make that mistake to miss the target and that one is put straight into the back of the net and that's over and two to the good the opportunities have been few and far between for both of these two teams but when they've fallen here for a run it's just hitting the back of the net every single time. And just once again, a genius play for Obron. What I really like about this goal is that he's using the play a lot with Ibra, and he knows Ibra is strong in the he's air. Gonna he knows, win the header, he, he's yeah. going to win the header if he just plays him in the right angle, and that's exactly what he, what he does. And then he can just pass it over or heads it through to R9. We saw it before in the previous game with Montaxo as well, and it's a really efficient move and requires very quick fingers as well, it's, it's important to say. But the creativity of it is so good. Oh, a nine right? in the box and my nine will just about get down. But yeah, two amazing goals so far. I think playing with that creativity and seeing the things that fast and be able to execute it and time it the way he's been doing. I've got to say it's been, been really impressive for open so far, uh, love the attack so far. Venezia need to try and get back into it and that's the kind of pass that isn't going to help you. Just a puff of the cheeks from Karuma's back in that scenario, that's a, a tough one to take and 
One of those that, you know, the frustration will continue to grow. He really hasn't had any opportunities here against Torino as Auburn really has put him to the sword. 70 minutes gone though. And this is just looking really good for the side of Torino and for Auburn. It's not going to be intercepted by Zakaria. It is, but it's only going to fall the way of one of the players here on the side of Torino. Eventually will be cleared away by Maldini. Pause is now queued. And maybe something for Venezia here, though, as R9 is going to break away the ball forward to Ronaldinho. Well defended by Maldini, Torino, and O'Brien. All together getting the job done. That ball cut forward for R9 is not going to be there. And again, this game just still hasn't opened up for Venezia here, and Karim's back. It might be a case of just waiting until the second leg to maybe try and put the pressure on, because right now they aren't able to find anything. But what a ball that is, and what a great save it is as well. Yeah, what a save. That was a huge chance, and would have been very determined if he would have scored that and we have a free kick here in a pass but just the last 10-15 minutes of, of the match has been a bit hectic much uh, back and forward play from both players didn't really try to keep the ball a lot just trying to launch new attacks all the time and I think it's a result of Kareem is stressing a little bit uh, maybe the two goal uh, loss that he's having right now is something that he needs to accept for the first leg and just calm down, have his break, rethink, reschedule, be ready for the second leg in order to figure out how do I, how do I solve this match right now because Obrun is getting into the dangerous angles, he's getting into the big chances and he needs to change something up. Right now Obrun has played a, a perfect match, he's been solid in defense, he's been knowing when to launch his direct play and when to execute the passes. Venezia need to find a route in here. Pull it now back to Zakaria. Doesn't really just have that passing ability. Zakaria now into on nine. Not gonna find a route through, but there's a little bit of room for Dybala. Eventually it's gonna find its way to Ibrahimovic. That's a red time shot. Nobody on him. And really, it feels like the pressure is getting the Karimis back here because we know how good of a player he is. Currently setting a number one ranked SR in the east of Europe. I mean, this guy can ball. We know he can. But so far, it's really looked like a, a tale of two very different players at this moment in time. O'Brien looking absolutely fantastic. Whereas for Venezia and Karimis back, it's been an underwhelming performance so far. Yeah, I think for O'Brien, it's almost been a flawless performance so far. Uh, a few dangerous losses in, in, in terms of possession in his build-up play, but that's what comes with, with the way of he's, he's playing. He, he's alright with taking risks in his build-up because he knows that if he gets the ball to one of, one of his offensive players, he will have very good chances of yeah, getting into those situations that we've seen. And Again, we see him try to use the player lock and take advantage of it, but I think the two two goal lead is, is something that will please him because it's been brilliant goals and, and I can't wait to watch them again because for me it's been two of the best goals so far just in terms of how much timing it requires and how much quality it, 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 it really takes to do it against a player like him but it could be free. Good chance, oh my goodness, good save from Aina once again he's really keeping the nets here. And Karim is back in this game. It's the final opportunity. Is this one going to be whipped in? Hasn't had the opportunity to. He's offside. Yes, he is. And that will be that for the first leg of gameplay between these two players. And what was promised to be a, a very good game has been kind of one-sided. O'Brien has looked the more likely in every single opportunity. That first goal is something that we'll talk about time and time again. And of course, the guys over in our studio will talk about right now. Alex, and that has been a great performance so far from the side of Auburn. Yeah, it has Auburn very much in control of this yeah. first leg, 2 0 up going into the second one. I feel very confident with it. The thing that I found very fascinating about watching that game and kind of the, the gameplay from Auburn, which Aggie mentioned, was a very direct play wanting to go forward, but specifically looking for the through balls kind of from out onto the wing into the striker. Mm -hmm. Both players were playing the 4-3-2-1, so utilising the right forward and the left forward really well, and just kind of going through ball, through ball, through ball, through ball, yeah. which made it really difficult for Krimi's back to kind of understand, well, when is he going to go for that through ball, when he is not, and it can be quite frustrating to play against, but he executed yeah. it really well. 
Yeah, I think Obron was clinical in this yeah. game, in this first game. Uh, he was perfect on the defensive end, uh, very, very clinical again on the offensive end. Of course, he had a couple of chances in the last few minutes of the game yep. that were saved very well by Mannion. And I think that uh, with one more goal, uh, we could already say that Obron is almost on his way through, through uh, to the um, top eight of this tournament, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, the fact that uh, Karim couldn't uh, um, resist, uh, could re sorry, could resist only a two goal loss, uh, keeps uh, the result still open in front of the second leg. Yeah, definitely. I don't think we can write off Karim is back just yet. You know, rank number one, as we said, he, he definitely wants to get into another gear struggled a little bit throughout that and I think we saw the nerves kind of get to him ever so slightly getting a little bit frustrated and agitated in a few scenarios but we'll see how that plays out into the second leg but as we take a look obviously at the first pass and move I mean. those extra passes and that composure to go for we spoke about it already on the commentary desk but sometimes you go for that extra pass and you think oh could I have just shot but something like that there you look like an absolute genius when you yeah, pull that off I, I think you could tell also from Karin's face that uh, he, he was a uh, complimenting his yeah, uh, friend definitely. and rival Obrun uh, for this goal. Of course, it's uh, the goal you are conceding on the first uh, uh, chance of uh, your opponent. So you cannot be happy, but I think uh, that uh, uh, gave also a mental hit to Karim's and uh, the rest of his game because, uh, yeah, you are correct when you say that we uh, saw kind a uh, kind of one-sided game. Uh, yeah, in and this, this, this here is something that was just absolutely, yeah, so so quality. I mean, that is what separates some of the best players in the world to be able to pull something out that kind of looked like nothing. The ball was out, you know, middle of the second half out on the left-hand side. Does the player a lot gets it on the Ibrahimovic, takes him up against that left back and says, "I'm taller than you. I've got better." jumping than you, I'm going to execute that. And the ability to just pass it down, find the R9 and pop that one into the pack of there. Pure, like, honestly, out of this world. And those are the three balls that I'm yeah. talking about. Constantly looking for them. A big chance there for R9 and maybe... Uh, you know, wanting to put that one obviously away just to kind of put the, the tie to bed really. Uh, but the chances are being create, uh, created as well for Obram, which he will obviously be very happy with. And, and that save at the end, yeah. keeping it to 2-0 for Karim is back, it is a massive thing there. You know, if he wants to stay in this leg, having that save gives him a very, very good chance to at least go in and say, you know what, it's two goals. If he can be aggressive in the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, get that first goal, it's then all to play for. Yeah, we already saw it today in the yeah. first uh, match uh, between uh, and the AC Milan that the, the fact that you can score an early goal you can uh, reopen the match again in your favor yeah. and of course the pressure is uh, uh, going from uh, your uh, shoulders to your opponent's one and of course we we saw we saw again uh, Karim very strong in staying in this game but of of course, on the other side, Obrun could close this game right uh, in the first leg. Of course, he couldn't. So we have a second leg, which is very, very interesting to see. Yeah, and I think for Obrun, he, he's not going to come out and say, right, I'm going to just defend this two-goal no. lead and, and that's it. Because he's, he's going to obviously understand that Grimmisbach is such a good player and creates chances that he's going to go in with the same mentality of going, you know what, I'm going to put a goal or two past you and have that lead that way. Sometimes if you just you know, shut up a little bit too early. Mm -hmm. You can kind of allow the opponents to come in, look for those long-range finesses and kind of take over the game that way. So I think we will see Obrin just say, you know what, game one worked out really well. I'm going to try and do the exact same thing again into game two. Yeah, I think Obrum should uh, keep this mentality, keep this game sense uh, and uh, this gameplay as well because it uh, it showed that it can be the, the perfect plan yeah. to, to, of course, uh, um, challenge his friend and rival Karim. He, of course, is a, he has a good two-goal lead now. So, yeah, let's get into the second leg now because uh, everything uh, is deciding. Uh, uh, here, of course, yeah. uh, for the result, this is massive. So let's get it back to our casters again. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, and again, it's just a fantastic game from Oberon and the guys over there. Very much agreeing with that. And I, I think I agree in the sense of not changing up the mentality or the way that he's playing. Because, I mean, so far, he, he has been pretty dominant and well, may well continue this with our nine. The chip over. Can he get there? The second chance of asking. Not quite. Hullet will get this one away, but it's the start that Torino would have wanted. Not quite the same to be said for Venezia and, of course, for Karim is back. Yeah, that's the start you want to get when you played 
such a good first leg. Yeah, I wouldn't change anything either because he didn't really give away any chances either. No, he didn't. I mean, uh, he was succeeding in every aspect of the game in the first leg and he will be looking to try to replicate that here in the second leg of the match. But on Karima's back's hands, he, he needs to change something, obviously. Uh, I think he won't be too happy that he gave away that amount of chances. But he needs to look in and, and think about, okay, what is it that I'm doing that brought me to the ranking and, and the status I have right now in the FIFA world? I mean, he, he, he's, he's the one everyone is, is looking for because he... Oh, oh great ball. Oh, my goodness. That would have been a wonderful goal for Kermis back. The pass through to Huller and, well, you would maybe want R9 there, but so close to the keeper it would have made it difficult. The corner ball eventually finds its way into the box and... Eventually, my nan will get a hold of it, but that was a potential opportunity there for Krummer's back and much better than what we've seen in the very first leg where we didn't really see any good opportunities. But that's the start he won to get as well. Uh, obviously, the first really big chance for him. Um, still needed maybe the right angle to convert it, but we see the two players once again. Like The, the picture of the game is, is pretty similar to the first leg. They, they're looking for the through balls uh, and using the two, uh, the right and the left forward in the 4 3 2 1. And that was better for him. And he needs to, to keep that up and, and to find even better angles than that. And for Oberon, he would try to yeah, replicate what he did in the first leg. Venezia now trying to get one back here. Kroom is back. It's definitely up the pace a little bit. Oh, nine inside the box. Look for the pass to go. And not going to work out this time. And the thing is here for Torino, they're going to have the opportunity to counter-attack plenty of times because we know that Karim is back for Venezia. Needs to find a goal. Ronaldinho cross in, put. And this one will be cleared away by Venezia. But that is the threat, isn't it? The counter-attacking threat is definitely there. As is the ball on to R9. Is he on side? It will matter not. Is the keeper going to get there? Very, very well defended in the end by Torino. And that was an important header, <laughs> yeah. otherwise it was a free run. What I like about these two players as well is that they're very good at you know, accelerating the game. You think playing against them or watching them play that, that you're saving a the defense. great so ball! <gasps> That's one of those opportunities that has to be taken. Ibrahimovic at the back post. I think he might have taken it with his left foot there and puts it wide, but Torino... That was such a huge opportunity to, well, maybe put this one to bed. That would have been three to zero. Now an opportunity now for Venezia on the counter-attack. Zakaria to hold it. No route through here for Zakaria. You can see just nothing being offered, but see Hernandez now, and we'll find the ball out now to Ronaldinho down this left-hand side. No cross being played in yet. Oh, now it's potentially open here. Pass across is going to be coming in a second as Ronaldinho has found his way through. That final pass is somewhat substandard, and Will not find the man. Torino survived, but definitely for Kroomer's back here, this has been a lot more of an attacking threat. He is going to be able to survive that potential scare, but that was a big, big opportunity. He's getting closer, and he will be happy with that. Oberon still creating chances as well, and my point before was before that my point actually got proved, that they're so good at ac accelerating the game, and you think for, for a moment that Nothing big is going to happen right now. They're still building up, but suddenly they just make a decisive pass and they have a chance. And the ability to do that requires a lot. So I'm really entertained with this game. I mean, they're doing great stuff. This finesse was maybe not the best, but overall, two players who really knows how to attack and how to, how to, to catch your, their opponent off guard, pretty much. Ball's been given away here. Fancy will find its way through to Dybala. Ibrahimovic, look at the run from Hullet here as well. Ibra back to Dybala, back inside. Hullet, it would have been another beautiful goal, but Hullet will be stopped very much in his tracks. Very fast counter-attack coming in here on nine now. Cannot get a hold of it. Well defended by Teo Hernandez, Torino. And of course, Ulbrun right now. This is very good defensive performance for himself, and he's really limiting opportunities to half ones for Venezia. Ibrahimovic here trying to find a way through, but definitely from the side of Kroon's back, this is definitely a, a better performance. R9 can't find his way through. 
Run was covered, but still advancing forward with the ball. And yeah, this could be good. Maybe we'll try to take the last chance here in the first half. We'll love the pass for us to keep possession. Could be up to something here. Hull it out wide. Just looking for a route through. Torino saying no, but that's a little bit of room for our nine. The pass inside, well blocked by Koulibaly, and this won't be cleared away. And again, the frustration for Karim is back. That's right at the end of the first half of the second leg. An important time to keep your composure if you are Obrun. But Karim is back. Can't find a route through yet. Then he's a bit frustrated because he, he, he felt hard done by there. Uh, he worked his way into the box and the chance was obvious. Uh, very big and arguably the biggest chance he had so far. But Koulibaly just comes in with, with a block there in the last second and it will frustrate Kareem because clock is ticking but he needs to remember that he's starting to create those scenarios uh, offensive on the pitch that he wants to get into and I think we're in for a treat here in, in the last 45 virtual minutes. And here we go, back into it. And for Venezia and for Karim is back, things have to change. Maybe not too soon. We might see a little bit more play out. I think Aggie will probably agree in the same sense that he has been playing because he has had opportunities. Maybe one here on kickoff. Zakaria pass out now to Dybala. Just looking for that little gap. Just needs a small opportunity to maybe come back into this one. And it may actually just come here from the left-hand side, or from the right-hand side, I should say, from Dybala. Left stick dribbling, just trying to find a way through. Look at the run here from Hull. It's just so patient. What a save by 9-9 once again. As close as it's come for Karim is back, and this corner is going to be played short. Brahim now. Oh, Dybala, I should say, can't find the pass to Ronaldinho. And a figure of frustration in the top left corner here. You'd like to think that one should hit the back of the net for Venezia. Yeah, the body language doesn't lie. He's obviously frustrated. I think, I'm not sure, but it looks like Obrun just slightly moves the goalkeeper, which potentially saves him there. But an amazing, amazing build-up play here. And he just waits, waits, waits. And suddenly the run comes from a centre mid, which I think that he needed a little bit in, in the first leg of the game that he he activated his central midfielders a bit more to come into uh, the box so it wasn't just three attackers trying to score oh, the goal. Bit of room for Dybala, green timed. Have to be careful with those ones. In the end it is an easy save for the keeper on the side of Venezia but yeah I, I think you're right you know that the, these opportunities are still coming yet for the side of Karim is back much more so than what we've seen in the first game. But he has to be careful of Auburn's threat, which is still very much there. 30 in-game minutes to go. Dybala back now to Zakaria. Movement inside, though. Finds a way through the box. Well defended by Maldini. It definitely feels like Auburn has set up a, a lot more defensively for Torino here. Zakaria. Back out now wide. To the side of Brahim. Can't find a way through. Good defending from Torino. A very nice defending here, just staying patient, don't rush up with any of your defenders and yeah, making Kareem is back, working very hard for it and that's, that's one of the, the things that's so hard is making your opponent commit and not be able to commit yourself and just stay structured in the defense here. Another good opportunity for Open, but this game is is really up for grabs still. I think he's he's starting to show a lot of good things, Kareem, but ultimately it have to happen soon. It will have to happen soon. Quadrado now will not find that pass forward for Torino. Venezia maybe gonna have to step their foot on the gas here just a little bit. Two to zero down. Twenty minutes to go. Very much still in the game. You know how with FIFA these things can turn around so often and so quickly. You'll know yourselves playing weekend league at home. You can be cruising 2-0 to zero up just as Auburn is right now. And things can change very, very fast. Ball in. Eventually he's going to find its way to die. Ball on nine. They were inverted. Flip that through the legs. And the Elastigo doesn't quite work. But still, the opportunities are nearly finding themselves in the end. Torino just have the players in the right spot. 
Yeah, and defends it again very, very well. He's not giving any space to Kareem to work with. He can have the ball outside the box, but when he gets into the box, he's really disciplined, really structured, and I can't really state enough how impressed I am by the by the defending of Oberon. I think I think he handled this second leg very well. Uh, he haven't been much more defensive, but he's just been he's been cautious. Oh, the ball's on for Tyabala. That cautious attempt has not really found its way to this moment of the game, and it might not will get down onto the floor and just about get in the way of R9. It definitely feels like things are a lot more open for Kuruma's back towards his defensive side of things. And look at these gaps that are opening now for the side of Torino. 78 minutes gone, and this may well be another opportunity. Argentinian finds Kessie into Ronaldinho. Kessie isn't going to be there, and unfortunately this one is going to be cleared away from Torino, and a potential attacking opportunity now is R9. Can't quite get the ball, and he's trying to cool the The defensive work from Torino once again is going to result in a counter-attacking opportunity. R9 now to Ibrahimovic. Finds his way through. Maldini gets shrugged aside. But just slows it down for his team, does Oberon. And will be a corner ball. He's worked it well, but well played from Torino once more. They constantly look a threat. And also a smart move here by Oberon that just slowed the pace down a little bit. He knows that he's in a very good situation. He doesn't necessarily need to go after the goal right now. Oh, lots of room for Dybala. It will be played away. But you're right, he's still there. He's having a look now and then though, isn't he? Yeah, but he's... He's still making, he's still asking questions to the defense, but he also, he's also aware of that Kareem have to, you know, pressure all out and, and, and take risk. And then he's just patient, waiting for him to press and the space opens for him. So uh, he's been playing very, very clever. And I think, I think that he'll get through now. Uh, I don't think there's time enough for Kareem is back to get back. Well, let's see. If he can find a goal now, then maybe. Pull it moving this one forward. Into Ronaldinho. The clip ball through. Quadrado gets in the way. For the side of Auburn. 89 minutes gone. You can see the pressure is being put on by Venezia. But just nothing really has fell Karuma's back's way yet. It has really been relatively comfortable for the side of Torino. And... Well, for Karim is back, you will have another opportunity. It's not going to result itself into anything. Or is it R9 offside? That's going to be game. And Obrun will get the job done and celebrates, knowing that that is a big scalp to take. A fantastic performance from him and deservedly walks away as the winner. Yeah, I think he was slightly better uh, overall. I think it was a well-played match for both players. But Obrun just had that first leg where he... He were the better player. I think the second leg was much more tight. Uh, hard to separate the two split two players. Yeah, very, very hard to separate. But Oberon gets the job done. Fantastic performance from himself. He'll advance on. We have one more game to go. But the guys over on the studio side of things are going to break that one down. A very different game in the second leg. Yeah. Obviously, with it being nil-nil. For myself, I can't believe Kareem's back didn't score in that second leg. That one chance he had, an absolute massive save from the goalkeeper. You saw his frustrations, obviously being very disappointed not to put that one away. But I think as well for Oberon, it was a, a very composed second half, more so to say, you know what, he's putting a little bit of pressure on me here. I'm just going to hold off, kind of take a bit of time off the clock, getting it out towards the channels, playing it out towards the wings, and just taking that time off ever so slowly. Yeah. But what did you make of that? Yeah, he, Obron uh, was uh, playing really smart uh, yeah. in this second leg because uh, he, he knew he, he had uh, basically zero pressure as long as uh, Karim uh, couldn't score uh, his uh, first goal yeah. of the match. And uh, he never scored that. So, yeah, a good performance from Obron. Again, very, very clinical on the defensive end. Of course, Karim, I, I think Karim in this second leg played a little, a little bit better. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, definitely. I but at the, second, uh, at the same time, he couldn't really concretize his chances. And that was a shame for him. I, I think he definitely played better in that second leg and take a bit of confidence on it. But I think when he comes back and he looks back on that game and, and kind of sees you know, his mentality and the, he was getting very frustrated. You could see that yes. obviously on the camera as well. There's a few times where he picked the ball up in the centre circle, managed to catch Aubrey out on the counter attack, but just played that through ball maybe a little bit too early. Obviously knowing he needed a goal sooner rather than later. Uh, 72nd minute, you know, changed over to that 
ultra attacking, went for that, you know, heavy press, which unfortunately Oberyn dealt with really, really well, which again, you know, for, for everyone playing FIFA, we know that when the opponent comes out with that constant press, it's so difficult to deal with, but he dealt with that so well, Oberyn. He just got it into the channels and made uh, made Karim's back just chase the ball, really, uh, and worked out to, to his advantage. So I think Karim can be a little bit annoyed. So on that loser side to still maybe go all the way. Yeah, let's see because tomorrow it won't be easy for no, no, uh, for uh, Karim. So of course with this result uh, he has put himself uh, in a very harsh situation now because uh, he is gonna is gonna probably uh, have to beat uh, uh, Danny Pitbull, yeah. who, who of course is the reigning champion. And but at the same time this game was so difficult because we saw. Obrum in a very good shape today and uh, he really deserved this win, eh? in my opinion. Uh, of course, we didn't mention one important thing that uh, Obrun, uh, um, alongside with uh, Genoa, had the best attack okay. in uh, the regular season with 18 goals. But at the same time, Venezia had uh, the second best one with uh, 16. Yeah. And of course, to keep uh, Karim with uh, uh, zero goals in this game uh, was very, very crucial for uh, Obrun's win. Yeah, definitely. And do you think maybe, you know, for Danny, who's obviously going to be watching these mm -hmm. games right now do you think he can take a look at Karim and kind of see oh, is that something I can look to exploit can I play off on that when they uh, if they possibly match tomorrow well uh, of course we know uh, Danny Pitbull is a very very good player in in an in or out matches yeah um, last year he showed the uh, with these performances from coming from the loser bracket to win uh, at the end of the title and the whole thing uh, in the East Syria team. But uh, of course, uh, Karim, uh, I, I think he cannot be happy, of course, with uh, yeah. today's performance, but uh, uh, his ability to uh, overcome these difficulties and to play with a sharp mind tomorrow would be crucial in this case. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes it can just be putting that game behind us and yes. saying, you know what, this is what I did wrong and I'm going to rectify that tomorrow. But definitely just kind of coming in with that new mindset. I mean, he's number ranked one of obviously course. for a reason and he's going to be able to do that when we do come back tomorrow. So it will be a very, very interesting one. The loser's bracket is... It's not nice to go into no. because obviously now if you're winning that winner's bracket, you're straight through to the top eight and you're feeling good. You can rest up now, uh, come back in two weeks' time. For the loser's bracket, though, obviously, unfortunately, it does have to be one loser. So Karim maybe has that on the back of his mind and just thinking, this is my last chance. Mm -hmm. But again, it depends obviously how, how the bracket looks and who matches who and should Danny and Karim kind of come across each other. It will be an entertaining game, which obviously we will take a look at tomorrow for sure as well. So very much looking forward to that. Yeah. Was there anything that you think from Auburn's side, for anyone that sat at home watching that, you think, you know what, that's something that you could look to introduce into your game if, uh, if you were watching? Well, I, I really loved, what I really loved from Auburn in this game was, uh, in these uh, two games, uh, yeah. I should say, was his ability to go forward with one or two passes. Yeah. And that was really beautiful. And this is, I think, what uh, really this game is all about, to create chances in a very rapid way. Of course, you can build up slowly and uh, trying to, you know, uh, dazzle your opponent in a yeah. sense, but at the same time, uh, when you can, uh, um, of course, uh, counter-attack with the two or three passes and to be able to shoot uh, on the goal uh, yeah. after those passes uh, is uh, is uh, very, very important. And uh, again, we, we saw Obrun playing really well. Uh, he's, uh, game style and he deserved it, yeah. really the I, win. I think that's something we can all be guilty of as we do go ahead and take a look at the highlights as well. Of that, like you saw, you know, that quick over top through ball there. Sometimes FIFA players can be guilty of building up too slow, which allows the opponent to get you know, nine, ten men behind the ball. Like mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of these players running striker drop back, which is down and up on your D-pad, which just tells the striker, just come and slot in and help press the middle of the pitch. And sometimes it can just create, you know, that two brick wall, let's say. Uh, and that's something that players can be guilty of, building up a little bit slow. So you will see from both of these players, as Ibrahimovic took that on his left foot, a very interesting one there. They're very quick and they're very direct and they've got the ability to just flick that switch and say, I'm going to go now and I'm going to look to try and, you know, convert a chance in, yeah, one or two 
two quick passes, mm -hmm. which they both did both did well, uh, and obviously a little bit more so on Opera's side. A very good chance there as well for Dybala, maybe just needing that extra yeah. shot cancel or the skill move to take away that, that block. AI blocks obviously being something that we want to try and avoid as much as we can. Uh, and this is where you just saw the left stick dribbling from Karim, just looking and just baiting out the defender, passing that over to the Hullet, going back across goal, and the goalkeeper comes in with an absolute wow. huge save, which you can tell obviously from Karim is back's reaction that he was not expecting that. But even just the ability then to left stick dribble, be slow and just turn and wait for Auburn to come and be a little bit aggressive and seeing that run obviously from the Hullet, a very exceptional skill and very unfortunate maybe yeah. not to find the back of the net. But as we look through the highlights, this is where you just gonna kind of see playing the channels, playing the wing, you can see the team press from Karim. So he hasn't got as many people back, which just gives Aubrey a little bit more time on the ball as he gets it into that final third, making it a little bit easier for him. So, but yeah, a very tight game. And the second game yeah. being very different to the first one, as we said, with it being nil-nil and two-nil, obviously across on aggregate, which does see Aubrey go through to the top eight. And then Karim is back, will be back with us tomorrow on the uh, on the loser side of the bracket. So what we're going to do now is going to go jump through into a quick break and then we'll be back with our next and final match for this evening. Every day, every day when I awake, I know what's at stake, what kind of moves I gotta make to keep it popping, raise the bar, elevate. People watching, some applaud, others hate. But either way, I'ma lead the way. Bring home the bay, gun, feed my face. Never been average, always been different. Low key savage, and to think I'm getting better. Every day I'm getting better. Finding ways to get to the cheddar. I go hard from the time I get up. I won't let up. I'm getting better. Every day I'm getting better. I know all my haters are fed up. I go hard from the time I get up. I won't let up. I'm getting better. If you with me, then it's cool. If you're not, cancel Christmas for you. On the spot, ain't nothing you can do to make it stop. Might as well enjoy the view from the side as I rise to the top. Wide eyed, your stomach tight, up in knots. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Look at what you're missing, and I'm only getting better. Every day I'm getting better. Finding ways to get to the cheddar. I go hard from the time I get up. I won't let up. I'm getting better. Every day I'm getting better. I know all my haters are better. Time I get up, I won't let up. I'm getting better every day. I'm getting better. Finding ways to get to the cheddar. I go hard from the time I get up. I won't let up. I'm getting better every day. I'm getting better. I know all my haters are better. I go hard from the time I get up. I won't let up. I'm getting better.
Ladies and gents, welcome back to the ECRI Team 22. We're very, very excited to get into our final game of the day, our final, final winner's bracket game, of course. My name is Tone, joined by Aggie, and very excited to see how this one's going to go down because we don't necessarily have the, the Italian native here. We've got a Brazilian player in Neto playing for Inter Esports, going up against Sampdoria's representative in Giovi. And very excited to get into this one. I said it is our final game. It should be a good one. Yeah, definitely. It's it's two very very good players as well, well known players. Uh, Giovi has been around for a long time as well, uh, and 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 tried a lot as a player, uh, played a lot of uh, international events. So, looking forward to see this M Neto, uh, a bit more young player coming into the scene and have the honor to represent Inter Milan here and yeah I mean a big stage for him to come Huge. in and, and, and to, to, to be in the quarterfinals in the winner bracket so I think we're up for a very very good match once again. Yeah we should be jumping into that momentarily the players are there and ready to go and we're really interested to see how this one does turn out. Neto again it's kind, it's kind of the story of, of the old guard against the new young bull isn't it? It's very much that scenario and so far, it's been the young guns who are getting the job done, Aggie. Definitely, and uh, and it's it's maybe not that surprising uh, when we also see how the young young players have performed throughout the season. Um, I'm expecting a more uh, a more tight matchup this time. Uh, Hyobi is, is a player who really impressed me. Uh, I had the opportunity to to play him. Uh, many times and he's such a tough player to play against you you're never gonna win against this guy with a lot of digits it's always going to be a close match and that's that's an ability that's really really rare um so yeah very tough player to play against and i think it's going to be a, a tight game well here we go then into what is you heard i promised it to be a tight game so Let's see if we can have a one that goes down to the wire. Most of these games so far today have been pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It is going to be Sampdoria and the Orange, and well, this one has obviously clearly got an issue, so we will get this one figured out as quickly as possible, going up against Inter. But I think for this one, you know, we haven't seen too much difference in the teams. We can have a little bit of a look there at some of them as well, just to get a better idea as one of the referees will come over and sort out whatever issue is going on. Yes, we are going to restart this game. We'll get back into it very, very shortly. But I think in terms of the teams, I just wanted to touch on something that i seen in the previous game with Zakaria in there. For me, didn't quite cut it as much as you see somebody like Barella or Kessie. For me personally, I think I would rather be playing Barella or Kessie in that situation. Yeah, I think depending on which formation you play and, and what you, your needs are as a player, uh, I would understand it, but he's a bit more, you know, there are good things having him and there are, uh, are, are worse things it's having good and him. Bad like things, he's, yeah. It's not as good on the ball, but the area he covers, the, the strength, but it didn't work out that well, let's be honest. Uh, Kessie's a bit more dynam dy dynamic and, and is mo more of a threat. Uh, yeah. going forward, right? Uh, but I always have this one uh, one fun rule that you have one midfielder if you're playing with two. Uh, lots of the guys are playing with three or even four, but you at least have one holding midfielder who, you know, like kind of a, a Robbie Keane or Vieira or, yeah. you know, who, who does the, the dirty work, uh, yeah. so to speak, right? And then the others are the technical gifted players who... So I'll hold it, I'll have somebody along yeah, those lines. Ex exactly, yeah, exactly. But it seems like... People prioritize only attacking uh, strong players at the midfield. They they don't need the holding players, and that's that's perhaps the meta that's just evolving. That you don't need like a just a player who can defend, but you want the best of both worlds. Absolutely, there is plenty of options for these players to grab a hold of. Vieira, somebody we haven't seen actually, of course, with his time at Juventus uh, and Co. Th that's kind of where you would see uh, possibly Vieira come through, but uh, we haven't seen any of them. Hullet has definitely been the more preferred. I think a lot of these players are going in saying, right, okay, Hullet, yep, get him in. Absolutely no problem. He's, he's, it's a no brainer, really, isn't it? And then spend the rest of these uh, potential icons on forward players, which is why we're seeing the likes of Ronaldinho, R9, etc., etc. Yeah, and that's, I think I just spotted Sinidin Zidane here. So yeah, that's we another. Got to see yeah, him. We, we haven't seen that, that, that player in particular so far. This right now is going to be Sampdoria on the attack straight away. A very quick play coming in. R9 with the second chance. 
not going to work out this time around. And I'm going to enjoy this one just from uh, Giovi's cam, uh, Giovi's cam here. Like, he's very, very reactive. He looked at the camera and was kind of like, well, okay, I mean, that should be going in. But nonetheless, the Interman survives and Neto will be able to get his first touch of the ball. Yeah, an interesting, interesting talk with, with, with the icons, which ones are, are you going with? And I'm, a, I'm also surprised uh, that we haven't seen Vieira because he's pretty versatile as well in terms of you can playing, playing him as Him and Hullet can kind of do the same job kind yeah, of thing. Vieira lacks a bit on the ball, yeah. but I mean in terms of moving him down to the centre back, if you were to, to risk a bit more and have to, to attack a bit more, um, and he just he's just so strong defensively, but it also says a lot about the mindset of the players and what the meta are that they choose more offensive, strong players that they don't prior prioritize uh, defensive defensive minded players as much, which yeah. which I like because that's that says something about their confidence, right? Yeah, the more I'm attacking, yeah, we get more attacking FIFA, right? Zidane on the ball now is definitely more of an attacking centre mid option. Hullet as well can sting the palms of the keeper, but that's all he does here for the Inter side. Quite an even start, I would say Sampdoria, and obviously for the side of Giovi, or Giovi, I should say, it has been a little bit more positive, I would say, with the opportunities that we have seen him not quite convert yet. See Hernandez inside now to Kessi. Koulibaly has really been a staple alongside Maldini at the back. Very much the centre-back options you would expect to see a little bit more of, but here's Ronaldinho on the edge of the box. Sampdoria was looking for the, the ball through to Ibra. It's been given away, though, and once again, Giovi's going to get a little bit of luck, and he will find his way through, and that's R9 to bury the first really good opportunity there for the man from Sampdoria. Giovi will find the lead with R9. Yeah, and some good things here and some things that maybe aren't good enough on this level. You, you can't give the ball away that easy. Uh, didn't really see, the, see it here in the replay, but just played the ball straight back out to, to Shiobi, who, who could launch a new attack. And a bit unfortunate as well, uh, some, some, some clumsy things happening inside the box, and Shiobi takes advantage of it. And that's, that's a subject we're going to speak much more about also tomorrow, that you, you just have to take, take the, the margins and take advantage of them. And, what I liked about the start of Giovi, the way that he tries to find the passing angles is that he's using the croquetta and he makes the pass in the croquetta. So it's, it's pretty advanced, it requires flow, but when you, when you nail it, it's, it's, it's an efficient move to you know, get past a, a midfielder or, or defender in order to find the angle. May well find the angle with it here. Oh, nine, he did so well. Good defending in the end, the strength of Hullet. Jovi will laugh it off, feeling that maybe should have been a foul. But I, I mean, the way in the studio yesterday, actually, we were talking about, I think you made a joke about one player who uses croquettes a lot. And then I, we won't mention names, but nonetheless, uh, it was one of those things where they were talking about, you know, the croquette pass is very, very strong at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a meta thing for uh, a few uh, seasons of FIFA. And it's, it's an efficient move. And the thing with skill moves and, and the, the skill cancels and stuff is that the players always being innovative and creative and finding new ways and angles and timings of using these these things and and the options to to be creative with them and the La Croqueta pass is one of them um, also seen and maybe we will see Croqueta finishes where you execute them so fast that you get into an angle where it's actually impossible to make a block with it, but it again, it requires really quick fingers. Oh, opportunity maybe for R9, it was the reverse elastico once more. Coming on through, not able to finally make anything work with it, but definitely feels like Giovi and Sampdoria is the one who's looking the more likely here. Once again, these croquetta passes coming on through, Mkhitaryan to Kessi to Hullet, R9 now to Ibra, it's very quick, it's very fast. From the side of Sam Dorius, slowing it down just a little bit. Ball roll, scoop turn. L2 fake shot, just trying to find a little bit of room. Still keeps a hold of the ball, but not quite able to make it work. And Ender can finally get it out here. Neto has not really had much of an opportunity to play with the ball. Oh, he's been sitting on the match here in the beginning of it. And he's playing with a very nice flow, Shiobi. That's the first thing I noticed, that 
there's a lot of flow in his build-up and the way he moves the ball. He likes the first touch passes, but he also likes De La Croqueta pass. And it's structured, but yet it's very fluent. So, yeah, a very nice start from him. And it seems like he's, he's very confident. Very confident. It does definitely feel that way. Looking to try and find a second, though. You have to, it has to be said, you know, when you see these teams who will find plenty of opportunities, if you don't take those opportunities, then sometimes the pressure can be a lot in that second game, on that second half. So things can change very, very quickly when it does come down to FIFA. We all know it. This time around, though, Giovi just keeping a hold of the ball, just not wanting to give anything away. Wants that final opportunity for the half, and he's going to get it. R9, and his feet are not able to find the ball. And that will be that. It will be a 1-0 deserved lead for the side of Sampdoria. And, of course, Giovi Neto on the side of Inter. Need to see a lot, lot more in the second half. Yeah, he's, he's been a bit more productive on the ball, uh, Giovi, I'll say. Uh, being, being a bit more... Uh, can say a bit more uh, he's, he's been better with the ball and a, a more concentrated is the word I was looking for um, and, and he's still patient he's doing it the right way because it doesn't seem like M Neto is is 100% on with his pressure pressure play right now seems like he's he's once one one step away all the time yeah. really and he will try to, to fix that because it's it's not because Giovi created a lot of chances. Uh, he got that one chance which he took and then he had some, some interesting situations where he, he, he could have converted them better. But it still, it, it hasn't been a game that's, that we've seen previously today with a lot of chances. It's been a bit more disciplined, structured, maybe more of a of an tactical game actually. Well, the tactical game so far is going Giovi's way. He's, he's vibing in the top left corner. He's chilled. Music on. A lot of players like to play that way. I personally like to hear the game sound. I don't know what it is. I, I, I like to feel like I'm in the stadium. I mean, that, that, that is pumped up. I mean, we've got no sort of sound here. I feel like I want to be there. But nonetheless, for Giovi, he's feeling it right now and just feeling good about his gameplay. Into Ibrahimovic here. Potential opportunity to start of the second half now. Ronaldinho, a little bit of room. The little elastico to break through. Three, I should say, as Ibrahimovic now. Edge of the box to Kessie, to Mikatari, and to Ronaldinho. Croquetta once again being enforced quite a lot here from the Sampdoria man. Ronaldinho, edge of the box with a finesse, good save. This one will be cleared away, and Inter will survive with no corner falling the opposition's way. But once again, Neto doesn't quite seem at the races here. It very much has been a slow performance from him. He's going to need to step it up now or immediately, of course, as we head into the second leg. But plenty of FIFA left to be played, but he's giving the ball away again here. Ball's going to be clipped through to Ronaldinho. Back now to Hullet. Mkhitaryan, R9's in front of him as well. Look for the pass. It has that five-star weak foot. Can go either way. Mkhitaryan once more. A little bit of room. Just trying to create a little bit more for R9. Slips its way through. Turns this one round. Mkhitaryan, edge of the box. The shot cancelled. The turn. Back into Kessin. It just feels like any moment he'll pull the trigger. Mkhitaryan isn't able to get through. And good defending in the end by Neto. But really, really good FIFA from Sampdoria once more. He's playing very, very well on the ball and it seems like it's impossible for M. Neto to get into a position where he has the, the angle to actually intercept the ball. And when he gets the ball, it could be here. Oh, and it's just one opportunity that falls his way. The defender can't get in front of it in the green time from R9. We know where that usually ends up. Neto will take his first, his only opportunity that we've seen so far. And it's one apiece. And I think if you are Giovi, you maybe feel a little bit hard done by that. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, if we are only isolated looking at the way of moving the ball around and, and keeping the ball, Gio, we have, have been the better player. Uh, but he's been struggling a little bit to get like that big chance, that big opportunity. He's been close a lot of times and he's been moving the ball excellent and also twisting and turning. I've, I've been impressed with that. For M Neto, this is a very important goal to get and also with the timing because she must have he must have the feeling or had at least until he scored that that he haven't really been into the game he because hasn't. He, he, he dropped possession so quickly um, but now this could give him something going on in here in the first leg Santoria and Giovi trying to get a goal back immediately 
Kessie into R9, a little bit of room, especially for Ronaldinho on this left-hand side. Turns it round, but defending a little bit better here from Neto. This one will be played away, but you can't give it away there. Mkhitary into R9, look at the run from Dybala. It's just the diversion tactic, Ronaldinho shot across. Defender is there. And maybe not the best option for the shot there with Ronaldinho, but it will result in a corner. Goes short. The Brazilian trying to glide by, does so, and here's the ball into R9. Good save, the rebound. R9 is not there, but Ronaldinho is offside. And that is fortunate for the side of Inter, because that was a well-worked opportunity once more. The rebound does not count. He's playing beautiful FIFA, Shiobi. Uh, but having been that efficient so far he's getting closer a little bit I, of room you can see again he's getting the ball back so fast yeah a little bit of room here for Dybala now into Mkhitaryan. in is that a free kick referee says no Giovi laughs once more and again Neto gives it away it's been far too often that this is happening for the young Brazilian here on the stage Mkhitaryan now to Ronaldinho back to Hullet now Mkhitaryan again with a green time for Ness and that's the crossbar Threatening once more, Sampdoria. Giovi. It feels like he's really been in control of this game, but he doesn't have much to show for it. No, he's, he's doing what he, he, he can. I mean, he's, he's also been good at variating uh, how he attacks. Now he's, he's going for some of the finesse shots and, and also times them green here. It could have been a goal. Uh, he's really putting pressure on M. Neto and... Even though Neto is still in the match right now, as, as, as the result is, he will have to change something up because you, you can't play two legs of, of, of this and expect to win. No. Uh, at, at the end of the day, at a point, he, he will con convert the chances if we keep getting uh, the possession back so fast. And it's also something with the flow. I mean, if you lose the ball that fast, it's, it's hard to build confidence in your, in your play. And, it's not a nice situation to be on the back foot all the time and, and have to defend inside your own box uh, for, for such a big majority of the game. So he will have to change that. And, and so far, Giovi just gets the ball back so fast and can launch a new attack again and again and again. It doesn't feel like M. Neto is really able to keep a hold of the ball for very long. That ball right now. It's got to be the man who finds the push here for Sampdoria. 73 minutes remaining. Neto just trying to keep a hold of the ball as best as he can. Hernandez into the feet of Mkhitaryan, goes for the shot himself. And yeah, it, it's one of those opportunities that Mkhitaryan, he can convert. But from there, I think it's a tall order. Yeah, but better from him. Just took a little bit of, of patience and didn't throw the ball away immediately. And you can also see that the Shiobi is... is He's, he's playing aggressive when he doesn't have the ball because he believes he can get it back fast and maybe something here for oh, Giovi. Dybala in the box to Ronaldinho and there it is, a deserted second goal for Sampdoria and for Giovi. It comes out, it's actually the fullback that gets forward and that creates absolute chaos in the inter defence. The ball across goal and my nan is not getting across to that from Ronaldinho. The 93 shooting on the face card stats tells the story of exactly what happened there. Sampdoria find the lead once more, and as said, very much deserved. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I think in terms of playing the game and, and being strong in possession and, and in the pressing play uh, especially, he's been dominant. He's been really dominant. And something has to change for, for the second leg. Otherwise, it, it will be impossible. It's, it's, it's just a major thing to be able to be patient in, in your build-up style and, and to, to create the right situations for yourself when you're playing and I'm looking forward to see the possession stats as well because yeah. it, it's, it's not like Giovi have, 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 have played the ball around for, for, for a long time. He, he's still been, been, been searching for those goals but because of his, his pressure play he's been getting the ball back so fast all the time so the possession stats will be pretty significant. Looking to just close this game out here is Giovi. And it's very much, as said, has felt like a, a game he has control, but it's only a game. And I think more so for Neto, he's probably considering he's 2-1 down, is coming out of this maybe not too negative because, I mean, bear in mind, we've still got two in-game minutes remaining here and things could change very, very quickly. But 
it looks like he's going to come out with his first leg with himself behind, but only by the one. And all things considered, that, that's not too bad, really, is it? The ball's going to be whipped in here. The potential opportunity for Sampdoria in the final moments. But considering how he's played here, Neto, to only be down the one, you've got to kind of take the positives from that. Definitely. I mean, we saw the first match as well of the day where it was also only a, a one-goal lead uh, that there was. And, and he turned it around. And now we can have a nice chat with his coach and and figure out what do I need to, to improve because there were definitely some things that he, he won't be happy with. Uh, I think he wants the feeling of that he's also having the ball uh, slightly more on Chiobi's pitch and, and threatening him a, a little bit more because you can't play a, a leg like that again and, and, and expect to, 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 to come back into the match. Yeah, he's very lucky to only be one goal down and I imagine the guys in the studio will probably agree, Alex, that was uh, pretty one-sided. Yeah, definitely pretty one-sided and like we said with the first game of the day being a very similar story to that and then obviously managing to overturn it, something that Mneto will be looking to do going into that. I think it was a very interesting affair. We were talking about how you know both players using the 4-3-2-1 mm -hmm. and a lot of players when they're using that formation, they tend to have one fullback on balanced and we actually saw that uh, as a clash for both players. Quadrado and Hernandez both on that right-hand side, left-hand side obviously on the pitch playing a big part. Mneto managed to get his goal to come back into the game from capitalising on that. Yeah. What did you what did you make of it? Yeah, exactly. Um, of course, the uh, much much more aggressive style yeah. by by Chovi here played a really great part. I think uh, the the result here is a liar because uh, honestly, two one yeah. is 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 uh, basically a result stolen uh, from for Inter th this time because uh, Sampdoria has uh, had a lot of great chances and a lot of great uh, maneuvers, a lot of great build-ups yeah. and. Uh, yeah, since from the start we are we are seeing the highlights and we could uh, <laughs> already tell that uh, Inter was uh, had the 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 luck on uh, his side uh, this game because uh, already in the second minute uh, uh, Sampdoria could score. Actually, yeah. here came uh, the uh, very good goal I think uh, for uh, for Jovi. I really liked his uh, gameplay and of course uh, Neto on the other side uh, he didn't play his best no, FIFA, of course. He, he struggled to get going a little bit. And I think the, the thing was purely because of the press from Jovi when he lost the ball. He was very aggressive in his face, wanting to win that back. But the ability to send men on a run from deep, happy to send Kessie, the more central defensive-minded midfielder, but happy to send him to go forward and give lots of options in that attack. Obviously made it very difficult for M. Neto to kind of realise where he's going. And like Aggie said during the match, having that lack of uh, pass cancel, essentially, constantly looking for that yeah. is so like difficult to defend against and yes as we said it could have been much more than the 2-1 lead that we are going into in that first leg as we saw an offside goal there a little bit unfortunate for Jovi but he, he laughed a lot of things off when it didn't maybe you know find the back of the net when he wanted it to he just carried on doing his thing you know you can see here sending the R9 sending the runner sending the hullet everything off the ball using the quadrada out on that right hand side looking for the long range finesse just making it really difficult for M Neto to, to realise what is he what is he going to do and what is he going to go for and again like we said having the full back uh, right back, Quadrado coming forward, being on that balance attack, getting into the 18-yard box, the pass off across being so crucial on this yeah. year's FIFA as a way to put it, put it obviously in, into the back of the net and test the goalkeeper. And you know that's one that slots in and obviously giving that lead going into the second leg. For M Neto, do you think there's anything particular that he should be wanting to do? Do you think he just needs to get in a bit more control, maybe try and have the ball for you know 20 minutes or so? Yeah, I think he. He needs to find the best spaces yeah. because in this game we saw Jovi playing very aggressive, aggressively on the defensive end of the pitch. Yeah. He wanted to um, recover the ball on the first seconds of uh, um, uh, Mneto build-up yeah. and uh, he, for most of the time he uh, actually could do this. But of course, um, M. Neto is very well known for being uh, much uh, better on the offensive end of the pitch than the, rather than the defensive one, of course. But in this game, I think uh, Jovi uh, played a really good role uh, in uh, not letting attack uh, M. Neto. Uh, we, we already mentioned it. Uh, he, the only Inter goal in this game came uh, basically, basically from a counter attack so from a mistake made by Jovi, which uh, 
who also, sorry, let me mention also this because uh, Sampdoria had the best defense really? in the um, regular season, of course. Uh, he conceded only two goals in eight matches. So, wow. of course, uh, now the result is already 2 1 in favor of uh, Jovi, but. Uh, M. Nato needs another goal, so he needs to score two goals when, uh, of course, Sampdoria conceded two in eight matches. Uh, so yeah. that's very, very difficult. It's going to be I a think. very difficult task then, and that's something that Chris and Aggie, I'm sure, are looking forward to. So we're going to go and pass that back over to them as they do get ready to jump into the second leg. Thank you very much, guys, and excited to get in the second leg. And I think, you know, uh, what the guys say there, very, very important to note the fact that Sampdoria only conceded two goals over the season. So the fact that now for Neto, he needs to find to himself such a good point to make, it's going to be very, very difficult. Because honestly, it, it just has not looked very likely for the side of, of Inter at all throughout this whole entire first game. No, definitely not. And I mean, uh, impressive stats. And, oh, yeah. and you can also see how he defends. It's not just without the ball, it's also with the ball. He's, he's having a lot of possession. And as long as you have the ball, your opponent can't score. One of the cliches. But I mean, he's, he's doing very well. He's, he's brilliant at controlling the match. And it's going to be hard. He needs to change something up. And I'm pretty sure he will. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what he decides to, to mix up. Okay, well, let's see if there's any changes do come on through. We'll be getting into the game in just a moment as we get into our final game of the day. Actually, we've seen some really higher level players. We've seen some tight games. We've seen some not so tight games. But we had a, bit, a little bit of everything here today for the Serie A team here in FIFA 22. And very excited to see how things are going to continue tomorrow. Make sure you do stick around with us over these next two days as we do find out who those final eight teams are are going to be and we'll see those final eight teams in two weeks time but it looks like we are finally ready to get into the second leg between these two and what we need to see is pretty much the same from Sampdoria and from Giovi but completely different from Inter and of course from Neto. Yeah I think he needs to be he needs to come out with a with a different expression he needs to to be a bit more uh, up in your face kind of um, to Giovi he, he can't let him keep the ball that easy so to speak and obviously it's not easy for him uh, what he does because it's it's two brilliant players who are playing uh, against each other let's not forget that it's 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 M Neto is a class player uh, he just needs to twist twist some things I think especially in the pressure play because that's where I I feel like he's he's been dominated the most um, that he have he has given too much space for Jovi to, to pass it around and make his twists and turns and launching new attacks and yeah, basically keep the lead. There's nothing worse than playing a game of FIFA when you feel like you're playing against 15 men, is there? It's the worst feeling in the world. And well, Neto uh, had, had to put up with that, but currently he's actually really putting the pressure on here as best as he can. The speed boost with Ronaldinho is effective. This time though, not effective enough to get past the defenders on the Sampdoria side. Jovi will play this one away. The run from Ibrahimovic will be tempting, but not quite the pass that is played. And Quadrado, as mentioned by the guys there, they, they were saying he's getting himself to up the pitch. One player playing on balance, and that's really causing a lot of problems in terms of the man at the back post being available. The man to find that pass to, to then drag defenders across. It does make the difference, but you have to be careful on the defensive side of things. Of course, Quadrado, very much a, an attacking-minded fullback and an attacking-minded player for Sampdoria is Giovi as he finds that ball through. R9 is going to get a little bit of room here inside the box to run Ardino, and it's so beautifully worked once more. Giovi will find another goal, points to the camera, and he will be thinking himself that's very much deserved over the course of the 100 minutes we've played so far. Neto. Able to do very little against this. Sampdoria find themselves 3-1 to the good. Yeah, and I thought he, he started out the second leg here pretty decent and netto, but it's, it's a tough one to concede and especially the timing of it because he's probably already a bit frustrated about how the game is going. He can't really get the possession he wants. He can't really get the ball back fast. And... It's a dream situation for Shiobi because, a as I mentioned before the match, he's so hard to play against. As he rarely, he, he, the games against him are always huge tight. opportunity here, though. Agi, oh, the pass across I thought was there, but you were going to say the games against him are always really tight. Yeah, and he, he's so hard to break down. And I think, despite that he he 
for now he haven't really scored a lot of goals it's been one of the most if not the most dominant performance so far like in terms of how the game has actually been played he's been superior and like the goal he conceded wasn't even like a chance where you would say okay i'm 100 110 percent sure that that will go in so i mean we speak about defense win championships and if he can keep this up uh, keep this up. I, I mean, he's a, he's in a great position because it's been on a really high level, and it requires so much focus as well to have the kind of game style he has, where you you keep the ball pretty much and you're not rushing things. And that's also the beauty about the game, right? That we have different game styles, which could result in a chance here. Hold it. Oh, he's going to be able to find a way through. Well recovered, actually, by Neto. That for the end aside. Teo Hernandez now to Mikatarian to hull it in. Tar9 turns left, right back to Tar9. Oh, maybe one pass too many. And I think Giovi will recognize that. The shot had to come in from one of them. It looked more likely for the second time around to R9. Huge opportunity though to make this fall. And now it's an opportunity now for the side of M Neto with Inter to get something back in. This is not done yet, but he keeps giving the ball away. And that's been a multitude of times, hasn't it? Oh, look at the run here from Ibrahimovic. Sorry, I will give it over to you in a second, Aggie, but it just feels like every time that Sampdoria and Giovi goes forward, there is an option for him to find that final pass. Yeah, and he's been brilliant as well in the pressure play with his fullbacks to, to acknowledge when to push up with them and go for the interception, which have allows him, allowed him to, to win the ball in situations and the angles that can be dangerous where M Neto haven't been in balance. And you can see it again here with the pressure traps. You always have two or three players close to the bold holder. And yeah, it's just been very significant in, in terms of the pressing play and the way to keep the ball. Maybe something can happen oh, here. This is really well played. Oh, and the pass over to R9 doesn't quite land. Still Zidane in the box is a threat, but... That is an opportunity that goes begging and maybe just the first time pass with the speed that it was passed in. Not quite as accurate as he would have liked. Still, you would expect Ronaldinho to find that pass in R9 to, to be able to latch onto it. Yeah, and I like, I like how it have not happened too much in the two legs, but I like that when he gets to the last third of the pitch, Neto. He seems like a player who can actually cause us a lot of troubles. Like he's good at good at accelerating the game, making the unexpected things uh, outside the box. So, what he really needs to improve in in this match and and for him it ha have to happen hurry uh, is to get up there, because that's what really have been lacking a bit in in, yep. in the two legs here. 100%. But here oh. we have it again. Yeah, on nine out wide, not really where he wants to be, and he. We'll just be running out of play, and actually, as Joey you put that one out for a corner, yes, he has. So, an opportunity offered that maybe shouldn't have been. Ronaldinho trying to work a little bit of magic as he so often did in his illustrious career. Zidane now across to Kessi. De Vrij, first time we've seen him, and well, not the first time we've seen R9 in the box, and not get anywhere in this game for the side of Inter. Sampdoria once again, and Jovi defending just superbly well. Yeah, it's been remarkable. Uh, so few chances he's he's giving away, and and also it's it's gonna be a very challenging second half here from M Neto because something needs to to get changed, and still you're not sitting with that feeling that he's able to really put Chiobi under pressure in terms of when Chiobi have the ball. So perhaps you have to change something up tactical wise. Uh, a change of formation, uh, a slightly more aggressive one, because he seems to be one or two steps behind all the time when Shiobi is in possession. Uh, and when you play against a, a, a play style like that, you need to make the, the player feel that you're close to him, that he, he shouldn't feel comfortable on the ball yeah. when he's having the possession. And that's maybe his, shot, his best shot now in, in terms of turning this around. You can see in the stats, I mean, I don't speak Italian, but I presume that meant interceptions. Five on the side of Sampdoria does make the difference. Giovi has been getting in front of the ball as best as he possibly can, and a couple of times it has been given away. 
it hasn't necessarily been the passing stats, it's just been a case of giving the ball away with the player that you're in control with for the side of Mercury Esports. And those are things you hate to see. Speaking to his coach right now, though, to maybe try and change things up here. Yeah, he's got Barella playing at fullback, actually, which um, is maybe a bit of a strange one. I'm not sure what the theory is on that. I yeah, I think he. It was, a, it was not on purpose. I think he just took uh, Theo Hernandez in. For the for the wing back because he ch he he's changing now because he he realized him and his coach realized that we're gonna try something else now um, we're gonna try different tactics uh, and apply more pressure on the ball holder um, but we'll see we'll see it's uh it's hard to see the way he's been playing Joby yeah. it's, it's been very 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 dominant. Without like being very fancy, but oh, he's done so well to get through though. Then that yeah. might just be the final nail in the coffin. The reverse elastico. It's so simple in comparison to some of his other goals, but Sampdoria and Giovi may well be through to the final eight with that fourth goal for his team over the last two legs. And this one was as simple as it gets. Just a reverse elastico. Koulibaly can't quite get in the way of it, and Neto. A roll of the eyes, a, a sigh, and a dejected character on the left-hand side of your screen. He needs three goals just to send us to extra time. Yeah, two completely different body languages. One expresses confidence, and the other one is 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 struggling. Um, that was not the start he wanted to give here on, wanted to have here in the in the second leg, in the second half where he wanted to come out with with a bang and, and, and try to, you know, shock Giobi, but yeah, it's looking hard now. Uh, he needs to pick something up soon in order to make potentially a comeback. Um, but it's just hard to see right now. He's, he's, been, he's been doing so well, Giobi. Oh, and this is maybe an opportunity though. For the side of Neto, back to Kessie of all people on the edge of the box. He would have rather Zinedine Zidane being in control of it there with a little bit of room. Forced away though, good defensive work by Sampdoria. Zidane though fizzes in, in to hold it, it's a good save. A half opportunity is, right now we'll keep the ball out of the net. Neto now though, to whip this one in and across, oh what a save! What a save and these opportunities keep coming for Neto in the final couple of minutes here. But he hasn't been able to find the back of the net. And I think Giovi knows in that opportunity, he really should have conceded. Yeah, that was a that was a huge chance and another nice corner combination where you use the player lock uh, to to flick it through to one of your other players. Uh, the first chance was it, I believe it was Maradona with his right foot, which isn't the best. Full star weak foot on his on his moment. Yeah, so it's it was hard, but the corner should have been a goal. But yeah, incredible save and he will feel. He'll not be happy because that no. was the chance to maybe do something. Uh, so maybe you should should try to go for some more corners because that that tactic worked pretty well. And sometimes you need to think in pressured situations. Maybe I don't have to overcomplicate things. Maybe I should just try to to do some of the more basic things. Get some set pieces where where some stuff can happen. Uh, where where I can get some margins and maybe yeah get some sort of momentum to get back into the match well for inter it kind of needs to be now i would say though in comparison and i know the scoreline is, is technically worse we've definitely seen more opportunities for the side of inter milan with netto representing the italian club he definitely has looked a lot better in the second game but he has nothing to show for it zidane on the edge of the box finesse from him and that one looked a little bit scary for a moment. This one will be played away and Sampdoria continue to survive. And I, I think for Giovi though, like the fact that he's not conceding these goals, there has been an element of luck, but the fact that he's found four of his own may find a fifth, the keeper does come out. T. Hernandez getting away down this left-hand side, but he's performed so, so well on the attacking front as well. And, and that cushion of those three goals May well see him through to the final eight, but another opportunity here for Inter. Zidane 
Turning this one around, reverse Elastico just to find the room. Ronaldinho into R9, finding a little bit of room himself, but well defended once more, but it's being given away. R9, edge of the box here. Now, what a save once more. The header across, is it finally going to find its way in? My goodness me. It has to be said, Neto has had his opportunities here in the final few moments that we have just seen. Yeah. Giovi and Sampdoria kind of surviving here. Yeah, and he's... He started to, to play with, with a lot of pace in his attacks, using especially the driven passes very well. Which bring, brings him fast up to these kind of situations. Oh! Yeah, we have a goal, it's the finesse shot <laughs> from Mkhitaryan. And with the driven passes here, I think we, we're going to have a pause here for Gio. We just calm down, just need to seal this out now, not getting stressed. But the driven passes has done a major difference for M Neto here in order to get fast up and not allowing Giovi to be compact and get his midfield down and attackers down to help and contribute in the defense. Uh, but maybe it just comes a bit too late, but it's something he can take with him potentially, potentially tomorrow. Uh, it definitely looks like that he's going to play tomorrow despite some nice, like some nice end game here. It's been nice, but only in the last 15 or 20 in the game minutes. Where has this been? the rest of the series. Finds himself two behind now. And Saldi on for Zidane, so a lot more of an attacking opportunity. Ronaldinho isn't going to be bullied off the ball, still has a hold of it here. Hold it in the middle of the park. Back to R9. Could this be another one? Back well defended though by Sampdoria. The pressure seems to be something that he's really struggling to deal with is Jovi. He has to get this one away. 76 minutes gone. 14 in-game minutes remaining. And maybe... Just maybe the youngsters starting to grow into the game here a little bit more. And isn't going to be able to do anything with that attack, though. And every moment that Sampdoria and Giovi have a hold of the ball is a bonus for his team. Look at the room here for R9 in the middle. Well defended, though. Koulibaly will get himself back. And Inter will retain the ball once more. An uh, important interception here. But oh, again, and again, dispossessed. R9. A little bit of room here. That was the ball, but just turning away from goal always going to be difficult. Does get a hold of the ball once more, though. Ronaldinho. Teo Hernandez down the outside. Looking for the pass. We'll get a second time to have a go at it. Oh, the ball in once again. What a save that is. The pressure is still there. Giovi still under the cosh. The ball in. Back across. And there's another goal for Inter. 82 minutes gone. And the pressure is unrelenting. And the pressure is getting to Sampdoria. What a turnaround. I mean, he is having so many chances right now and the constant pressure, the effect of that, we, we just seen it. He's, he, he feels like he doesn't have any passing options. And Shiobi has been arguably the most comfortable player on the ball today in terms of possession. Suddenly is so pressured that he feels like he doesn't have time to do anything with the ball, that he's surrounded by inter players all the time. So, we're in for some very interesting minutes now. Uh, it's only one goal now. It's out of nothing. Out of very, very little. It's Ansaldi. For birthday Ansaldi to get the goal back. Dybala on for the side of Sampdoria. Maybe trying to get something going forward a little bit more. I would imagine we'll see for the side of Neto and Inter. Maybe not quite as attacking for the first few minutes, doesn't want to concede another one. He kind of had to go for it there, but now he only needs one. Five minutes to go. Still opportunities to be had for both teams. Sampdoria and Giovi keeping hold of the ball. That's a good ball into Dybala. Back to Maldini and just trying to tick this time down. Di Lorenzo now. Just doesn't want to offer anything to the side of Inter. Pull it now out wide to Di Lorenzo. Potential attacking opportunity here for it as well. He just doesn't want to give the ball away though. Even when the pass does seem on for an attacking option. Keeper yeah, coming out. Okay, he's here. trying to bait him out and giving the ball away and he is actually going to give it away. Mkhitaryan. Ronaldinho here for Inter. 89 minutes on the clock. It's Ivar Fahimovic down this right-hand side. The ball across to Ronaldinho is on. The shot cancelled. The defending is there. Maldini still with the ball for Sampdoria. Two minutes on the added time. Only one minute to go as Maldini cups it forward. But the ball's been given away. R9 into the box. And Mkhitaryan, the comeback is complete. As Neto finds the goal for Inter Milan to send us to extra time. Wow. This is... 
some amazing scenes we're having here. What a comeback. We, we spoke about that we haven't seen enough from M. Neto. And in the likes of 10 virtual minutes, he managed to score three goals against one of the best defenders in this competition. Absolutely incredible scenes here. Yeah, we are shocked up here, let's just say it like that. That is insane that Neto is able to come back in this game. Inter were dead and buried. That... Fisiovi now, you've got to think, where's his head at in this game? His coach has to calm him down. Very, very disappointing for him to be in such a promising, a dominant position. And he's given it away. And Neto brings it back with literally the final kick of the game. Wow. I, I, I've got seven games to commentate tomorrow. I don't know what my voice is going to be saying by the end of it because this one has been an absolute barn burner as we head into extra time. What a game. Absolutely incredible scenes. I mean, we will go to extra time. It was in the last second. I highly doubt that he has time to... Oh, sorry, it's me who's still overwhelmed here. We are already in the extra time. I mean... What a finish to, uh, yeah, to the game before. Uh, uh, we were so certain that oh, yeah. this game, this game was done. I mean, Diobi was the better player for 165 minutes or something, yeah. and then it just completely turned around. And I'm, I'm curious to see where the momentum is right <laughs> now. <laughs> and uh, you know what? It has to be said as well. Neto had some huge opportunities where. The some of the saves, I, I mean, as this corner goes in, will there be another one for my nan? Yes, there will, but that's a little bit more of a simple one. But I think all of us would probably have suffered that frustration going up against this uh, signature signings, uh, Magna, because the guy is incredible in nets, it has to be said. Every time I come up against him, I, I'm like, I'm going to struggle to score. And for the side of Inter and for M Neto, a couple of situations, he could have walked away as winner here, but as it goes, where into extra time, Hullet will play this one forward, look at a little bit of room here for Ronaldinho, gets the ball back, it will be a free kick though, the foul comes in, and Fisiovi, a shake of the head once more, it's very hard I, I would imagine to, to keep your head in these scenarios. Yeah, no matter how experienced you are and how much you try, these kinds of situations are so unique and rare that emotionally you, you really need to be like set on and it's so hard because what he ball. felt so much in control he was in control but all of a sudden Teo Hernandez has gone down this left hand side the ball is whipped in Minan will get in the way of that one R9 never really in with an opportunity to get on the end of that there will probably be one final attack in this half of extra time Hull it now back to Kessie next goal would be huge. If we do get one, of course. If we do not, to penalties we go. Final opportunity here as Hernandez gets away down this left-hand side for Sampdoria. Giovi with one final moment to maybe get it back. Goes just a step too far. The ball's in the back of the net, but the ball was also past the line. That will be a goal kick and the end of the half of extra time. That is the look of a man who was 4-1 to one up with a probably about what? 15 in-game minutes to go. It all looked pretty good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I really didn't think we'd get this far. I thought it was done. Yeah, we got to we gotta also give it to M Neto. That's, uh, that, that was an amazing comeback regardless of what hap happens here in, in the last minutes of the game. And I mean, to be able to convert those chances um, the way he did and keep your nerves calm. Uh, he played like, uh, and obviously he didn't have anything to lose because he was outplayed for a long time of the games. But to be able to switch like that is very, uh, very, very unique and, and, and impressive. Well, here we go. The final 15 minutes of in-game time before we head to penalties, unless, of course, we do see a goal in this time. And typically, an extra time in, in FIFA 22, we, we haven't seen a lot of action for the most part. Will we see much here? Neither team want to give any opportunities to the other side. They don't want to give up possession. 
Sampdoria trying to keep a hold of it, but really well pressed there by the side of Inter. Mkhitaryan now for Neto. Just feels like he has that little bit of momentum here, Agi. He now moves forward with the ball. Yeah, that's definitely the feeling that we are sitting with and most likely also the two players. Because it's the game has changed totally, uh, also in terms of how the two players have, are playing the game. We are not seeing Giovi being as confident on the ball at all. Uh, dropping possession a bit more easy uh, compared to what we saw before and it just shows how much how, how strong mentally you have to be in order to, to reach the top. Cassie, a little bit of room to find Dybala. Just looking for that opportune moment. Cassie to Dybala once more. R9 gets a touch for the first time in quite some time for the side of Sampdoria. Cassie now back to Maldini. Five in-game minutes remaining. And really just feels like Giovi does not want to give an opportunity to the side of Neto. 117 minutes coming on the clock now. A little bit of room for Dybala. We'll find the ball into Ibrahimovic. Keeps a hold of it. Back to Ibra. The pass is wayward though. An opportunity now for Inter. As the final moments of this game will tick down. 119. About to come up on the clock. The ball is spread wide to Theo Hernandez. And now back to Koulibaly. Does Neto or either one of these players feel confident heading into penalties? It feels like Neto is happy to see them. Although, will we? Hernandez to Ronaldinho. A little bit of a run's being made by R9. This may be the chance to finish the game. Goes for the lob over the keeper and my nan will save it. A sigh of relief in the top left corner. It was the only option that was on for R9. It's the only option for a lot of these FIFA players in that situation. But we go to penalties. Ronaldinho for the first one. For Inter. Sends it right and saved by my nan and saved by Giovi. Sampdoria, the time for them and Ronaldinho to take it for him as well. Straight down the middle, first blood to Sampdoria. Now it's up to R9. Can he find one here for the side of Inter or does he guess right once more? The composure is there in the penalties for Giovi. Dybala now for Sampdoria, puts him two to the good. Driving seat cemented. The Swede in Ibrahimovic. For Inter Milan to try and find one to find the back of the net, but he cannot get past. He finds so many goals in so little time, but he hasn't found the back of the net once in the penalties. It is a 3-0 win in quite the strange way to end the game here. After the comeback from Neto, he can't find a single penalty. I don't even know what to say at this point. <laughs> How does he miss all three? It's, it's a game of... Of, of feelings and I think we, we've been through the entire register <laughs> just for for this match I mean incredible scenes and yeah really speechless right now because obviously you you would assume that M Neto would would come into this PK shootout with a lot of confidence but PK shootouts lives their own lives and and Chiobi managed to 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 bring it home the victory here but I'm not sure he would be 100% happy with how the game changed, how he could slip that control he had. And overall, he will be happy and he will go through. And Neto will, will try to look at the positive aspects, even though right now it's probably an emotional roller coaster, 100%. He will have to pick himself up because the last minutes of, of the game were, were something he can bring with, bring with him tomorrow and, and take advantage of it. I hope somebody in, in the studio has an extra voice box for me after that one. What an end to the game and what an end to the day of what has been fantastic FIFA across the board here at the East Area team. But we are going to go over to the guys in the studio to close out the show. And what, what a way to finish it, Alex. My goodness. Talk about saving the best till last. That was absolutely phenomenal. We haven't had a penalty shootout all day, which we did talk about. We did say, is that possibly going to be an option? And yeah, a very interesting one yeah. for that. I think the thing that, that we saw there from that, obviously, you know, commiserations to um, Neto, but for Giovi, I think there was 
there wasn't really a celebration for him for winning the penalties. Nah. I think he was so angry with himself for even allowing Emno to get back into the game and have an opportunity to take it all the way to penalties, which that's a sign of uh, someone that, yeah, definitely going to go far uh, as we go into the top eight. But obviously, yeah, yeah an oh. interesting one. What did you make? Oh, oh, of course, uh, yeah, Jovi cannot be happy with no. his uh, performance in the, in the second leg. I think that after the second goal, which meant a free goal advantage for him at the time, of course, he relaxed a little bit too much, maybe, mm. and uh, he made quite a few mistakes on the defensive side that he absolutely didn't make in the first leg. And of course, Manuel Neto was uh, uh, both lucky and very good on capitalizing on those chances that uh, his opponent gave up. And uh, yeah, I think also um, Inter Milan has uh, a DNA for comebacks, uh, both in uh, <laughs> uh, in real life and uh, in the esports scene, it seems. Uh, and uh, Manuel Neto really showed us uh, that uh, Inter never dies uh, well, in those games. The thing is, as well, though, it could have been more for, for M. Neto. I mean, how many chances did he have where Manion comes in and makes these massive saves yeah. and stops him from grabbing those goals, which he definitely could have been, you know, done the job a little bit earlier to maybe even possibly win the game if some of them did manage to find a way in. But you say about, obviously, for Jovi that you didn't see that lack of composure in the first leg. But I think that's where you've got to, you know, got to spin it and say, well, Emneto came in, he changed to a 4-2-4, so he's got his right wing and left wing sat up against the fullbacks, which takes away any opportunity for Jovi to say, I've got the ball at my right back, I'm going to switch it to my left back. Because if you do that, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. And then he couldn't play out of that press. He couldn't find that little dink ball over the top into the centre mid to then break away and get into that final third. And Emneto did such a good job of just punishing him, keeping him in, you know, his half and being able to capitalise on that. But that is a real tough one from that to go ahead and, and bring it all the way back and then to not even score a penalty in a penalty shootout. Yeah, that's, you know, uh, we already heard uh, Agge mention it. It's a, um, an emotional game, yeah. FIFA. And of course, to, already to get to the penalties, I think it was quite a, a good result for Emineto, uh, giving the fact that the game was basically already lost yeah. until uh, Jovi decided to uh, <laughs> get Emineto again in, back in the game and yeah this this was uh, I, I think the best uh, overall match we had uh, oh. tonight uh, <laughs> the most emotional one at least and uh, I think the, those pl those two players really need to improve uh, on their mental aspects uh, in front of the, the, the final eight in Chovis cases yeah. of course and uh, uh, in front of tomorrow matches uh, that really decide it all for Mneto. Yeah it is a difficult one obviously for Mneto who you know be very disappointed to not win yeah. on shootouts after having that big comeback to kind of regroup himself and bring him back into the losers bracket tomorrow that's a real tough pill to swallow this evening yeah. but he's got to come back tomorrow and just kind of try and put it behind him maybe learn from it I suppose as well at least for Jovi he's got two weeks now as he goes into that top eight to kind of prepare for it and by then he will be a little, little bit yeah putting it behind him I'd say so yeah we'll be an interesting one to see how Mneto does for us tomorrow I think an interesting point to say about it is that with penalties when you miss your first two, yeah. we saw Emnet then go down the middle for that remaining one, which, you know, if you miss two penalties, some players just go into that creature comfort. Let's go down the middle. At least then, you know, you've yeah. got a good chance. You know, it takes takes a lot of, of nerves to kind of stay down the middle. And I think Jovi as well, that she used his goalkeeper really well yeah. to move him across goal. And then he gradually moved him across as the player went to go strike the ball, covering one side and also the middle, which came, you know, to save him in that penalty shootout. Yeah, uh, and an expert uh, analyst could say that uh, the penalties shootout are like a coin flip, are like a rock, paper, scissors game. Yeah. But uh, I think Jovi showed that it was the best, uh, especially in this part of the game, in the cru most crucial part as well, yeah. of course, because if you get to the penalties, you know that you need to score more than you concede. And fortunately for uh, Sampdoria, of course, he conceded, conceded none yeah. at the, in the end. And this was uh, really crucial for him. And finally, we can see his smile as well. Yeah, and let's you know, not forget as well that Emneto did have that last chance on the 120th minute, looking for that little chip. Magnan obviously being there and managing to stop that run from going in but that was a big chance to break away we didn't really see too many chances in extra time and I think that's more so because Neto worked so hard to get back into the game yeah. with that constant press his players obviously were very tired you know the stamina bars were kind of drained so it was pretty much a both players, I think, were kind of so scared to make a mistake. It's kind of a, let's just hold on. Uh, yeah. And if it goes to penalties, it goes to penalties and kind of back yourself in that ability. But 
penalties, as you said, yeah, there are, are a little bit of a look at a draw, let's say. But I think a, a lot of mental side does come to it and trying to think about, like we said, you know, when you miss a couple of penalties, the chance of a player going down the middle then is so much higher yeah. because they're so worried about missing it. And obviously, you know, it's different for, for us at home. If, if we're playing in a penalty shootout, we have the little reticle, the little circle, you know, and you can see it's quite easy. Yeah. Obviously, for these players, they don't have the ability to have that. So you have to be very precise in where you're putting it and kind of back yourself in that. And it is a, a very difficult skill to, to kind yeah, of do. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, I think uh, that uh, an expert player, uh, just like uh, Jovi, uh, really could uh, actually tell where um, the uh, NATO shot was going. And uh, he could uh, recognize the angle and uh, yeah. went for the save. And, uh, for, uh, of course, luckily for him, uh, he could uh, actually save all of three of them. We are not saying that uh, Manuel Neto missed uh, his chances. Uh, we are saying that the goalkeeper was better yeah, yeah, in yeah. this case. Yeah, he was. And we've seen that so many times today. And we'll probably see it a lot tomorrow as yeah. well. In the loser's bracket, we'll see Manion come out and make saves <laughs> left, right and centre, as he has been doing on that whole day today. And we will go ahead and take a look at the highlights for us as we do round up our final game of the day and we definitely did save the best till last which was a, a nice thing for us to do for sure as we can just see that pass off across we've spoke about it so many times the players looking for that as their easy easy way to find the back of the net Ronaldinho doing that and this was at a time where Jovi felt very confident very comfortable you know thinking I've got this tie done and dusted you saw a little finger towards the camera there being very happy with how he was playing but how did it all change we do see 48th <laughs> minute Ronaldo going for that reverse Alasco, top players looking to do that, to kind of almost glitch their way through that defender and wanting to take them on yeah. and getting them into there. But having that confidence to do that, making it 4-1, and by this point we all agreed that it really seemed game set match one. Yeah, that's what we said, that we all said, and we all think where was we all uh, were thinking, I think uh, this was GG uh, for everyone. And yeah. the, the fact that uh, M. Neto didn't give up, actually, when uh, he had the whole world against him. And th this is a massive thing. And this, the, yeah. The, the, the player locks on, on the corners, to have the ability to whip it in and player lock as the ball's in the air and move. It was Kudabali he was using most of the times for that, to have that and move him across and really get there. That is such a hard and difficult skill to do that, you know, we could obviously see Jovi was struggling to defend it. He didn't really know where to go, what to do. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was definitely something that I think players can, can take a look at and definitely put it into their game as well. Very difficult skill to do, mind you. And Mkhitaryan, that green time finesse, we've seen quite a few of them today, haven't we? Yes, yes, this, this goal is absolutely crazy, but we have seen it. Uh, uh, from uh, Mikitarian, of course, the five stars uh, weak foot uh, yeah. plays a, a good part of this goal. But uh, at the same time, uh, we have seen uh, a lot of chances uh, that uh, M Neto couldn't uh, actually capitalize uh, that were given given away by like Jovi. One, eh? Like yeah. this one, he, he, he doesn't clear the ball for some reason, and and then M Neto is there to capitalize and to score the uh, the the. Three to four goal in this case, and uh, yeah, when you are actually on a move like that, uh, Jovi has to be more uh, more clinical on the on giving up may maybe some possessions uh, yeah. as long as he doesn't concede so many chances. Yeah, definitely, and that that obviously was a massive goal, especially because he had that work chance and the keeper came up with a massive save, still come out with it. And as we can see, we thought the attack was done there. Vanaldino going for that shot cancel, uh, yeah. and you know didn't manage to come through to it. And you think that's it, this game set match one. Yeah, Jovi's going to do it. Tries to go for the long ball to the clear. He wanted that to go far wing, didn't manage to go there. Wins that header and that last kick of the game, taking it through to the extra time four four. And yeah, definitely M Neto putting on a show for us there yeah. anyway and taking us all the way into extra time and then into penalties. And you can just see, he, he wanted that ball to go long. He didn't want that to go to that short man. I can assure you of that. <laughs> and it just, just obviously, unfortunately, didn't go to where he wanted it to do. The head out on the win and then obviously managing to, to slot it into the back net. Being composed as well. And this was the last attack that I spoke yeah. about. Oh, no, he didn't really have much to do. You can look at the stamina. He's not really got the stamina to take on the Maldini. So he tries that green time chip, which they do work very effectively. But Manyan says, no, absolutely no chance. And look at this just going through down the middle nice and simple penalty there uh, and that was you know the, the game yeah this was the last penalty the, the 
the decisive one, of course, yeah. uh, the, the two misses, the three misses, I should say, uh, before it uh, played a really good part. But yeah, yeah, we are done for uh, today's day and uh, we are seeing actually the winner bracket right now. Of course, uh, Genoa has the, to consider a loss against the uh, AC Milan clash. Yep. It, it was a, a very good game, of course, uh, not a, um, a very one-sided, a uh, very two-sided game, the second one, because Bologna lost three to seven. Yep. Um, to Salernitana, then Venezia against uh, Torino, which means uh, Karim against Obrun, uh, maybe uh, the match of the day, we could say, ended with 2-0 uh, no in, in favor of uh, Obrun, and yep. then uh, we already saw the last game, of course, a banger of a game to end this day. And then, uh, of course, uh, for the, the last, uh, for uh, sorry, tomorrow's games, we, we will have uh, Genoa Esports playing with Fiorentina Esports on the second round, because on the first round, Starting from uh, uh, three uh, three o'clock, so an hour earlier than today, we have Udinese Esports the Link playing against uh, Sassuolo Esports. Uh, then we have, uh, of course, the reigning champion uh, Danny Pitbull playing uh, playing against uh, the Verona. But uh, we are, we can see, of course, uh, in the graphics now that. Uh, Four teams are already qualified for uh, the final eight, which yep. are AC Milan Clash, US Salernitana Esports, Torino FC Esports, and of course, Sampdoria Esports. Yes, and it will be a very, very interesting day for us tomorrow with the four players obviously still to go through and four teams to make that top eight for us to return in two weeks' time to crown our e Serie champion. So we're looking forward to bringing that for you. As we said, we will be live at 3 p.m. Italian time, so make sure you come on and see. We've got a lot of matches tomorrow, haven't we? Oh yeah, we have uh, like seven best of two, uh, yeah. which, which uh, definitely can be a uh, an absolute banger uh, yeah. for uh, tomorrow's day. I I, I am lo already looking for those games because uh, today's games were actually on a very very high level yeah, of definitely. FIFA and I I think we we can say we are joyful to be here to comment those games because. They are like the best Italian players right now. Yeah, definitely. And we have got some players obviously to come and play who we haven't seen as of yet on that loser's side. So we do look forward to that. But for now, that is going to be us from the studio. And thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And as the guys over in the studio say, Aggie, I, I mean, it has been a fantastic day and we've only got more of it to come tomorrow. Yeah, really excited uh, to, to see what happens tomorrow because we're going to find the last four players who will advance as well and and dreams will come true and, and for some of the players as well, uh, losses will be, will be tough but it's going to be very, very exciting tomorrow as well. Yeah, absolutely. As the guys already said though, we're back tomorrow at 3 p.m. the same place you guys have been watching of course and we are very excited to see you there make sure you join us tomorrow from 3 p.m central european time for more fifa action